Sports North, the heart of the, the heart of the fan. Well, I mean, we get to play at the best ballpark in the in the league. I mean, everyone that comes in that gets to see and take part in Major League Baseball comes in, walks out, sees Target Field again after they haven't seen it for a while, and they go, "Wow, this place is this place is pretty special." Target Field's beautiful. And I'm not just saying that because because that's where we play. It's one of my favorite stadiums in baseball. I mean, the fans are awesome. The stadium's gorgeous. I think everything about it, the fans, the field, the dirt, the bases, everything, you know, uh, I just had to take it all in. Uh, Target Field is beautiful. You know, it's, it's probably one of the best in the game. So you know, it's definitely just, it's a sight to see. matchup on deck the twins and the angels play the first of three from target field coming up tonight on twins live this is one of just six home games left on the schedule for the twins They're trying to finish strong on their home field this season we mentioned the pitching matchup tonight the twins will face shohei otani the only two-way star in the big leagues what is the key in this showdown is shohei Minnesota's starter is a hometown star. Louis Varland will make his target field debut tonight. We'll look at this matchup of starting pitchers. And it's all coming up next on Twins Live. Maybe not ideal conditions. Pretty pleasant night here at Target Field as we welcome you into Twins Live. I'm Marnie Gellner with Tim Laudner. Twins open up their final homestand of the season. They just came off a road trip where they played five games against Cleveland, three games against Kansas City, eight games. They dropped seven of them. It ended up being the defining road trip of the season, and there's no way to sugarcoat that. Yeah, I'd agree with that, Marnie. Uh, this is a situation where you play five, five and a half months to put yourself in a position to try and win yourself a division, and the Twins were in that position. They played hard all year long, and they were in a position when they went into Cleveland to try to figure out a way to win a few ball games against a really hot Cleveland ball club, uh, and then to finish off that road trip down in Kansas City against the Kansas City club that had been struggling. Well, it was the Minnesota Twins that struggled, and I think the injuries just finally caught up to these guys because they were feeling a team just wasn't quite up to Major League par. A lot of mistakes going on on the field. And so for the Minnesota Twins, what do you have left? Well, you have six games, just like you said, Marty, in front of your home crowd to be able to put on a show for the people that have come out and supported you all year long. And overall, the Twins have 12 games remaining. They've played 150. The record right now, 73 and 77. But look at what is left here this season. These three games against the Angels and off day Monday, three home games against the White Sox, and then finishing off the season on the road at Detroit and Chicago. Well, and what is left also is that we're talking about a ball club that last year was fighting to try and stay out of last place. They did not win that fight last year, and so they have an opportunity this year to get their records back up above 500. And that means a lot. When you go into an off season with everything that has gone over the course of this year, to finish with your record above 500, which it was far from last year, that would mean a lot to this ball club moving forward. Yes, there have been some disappointments along the way. This is a ball club that was in first base for the ma major part of the season, or lost first place. And so, uh, yeah, there's some things that need to be done over the course of the offseason. But before you get to the offseason, get that record above 500. It would mean a lot to these players. The headliner for this series against the Angels is that the Twins are facing Shohei Otani tonight. It's the first time this season. It's the second time in franchise history. Let's join Katie Storm down on the field. Katie, I mean, Shohei gets a lot of attention. He gets it from his own fans. He gets it from opposing fans, from opposing broadcasters. <laughs> Deservingly so, because what he's doing is really incredible. 
Yeah, absolutely. Shohei Otani, such a unique talent. There's, of course, what he can do on the pitcher's mound. He's four strikeouts away from having 200 on the season. He'd be the first Angels pitcher to record that many in a single season since 2010. He, of course, has one of the top ERAs in the American League among starters with at least 20 starts. And then there's his abilities at the plate. He has over 30 home runs this season. He can do it all on both sides of the ball. And, well, Twins players, they're not afraid to credit him for that. What he, what he is able to do is unbelievable. Um, from a skill set standpoint, there's not too many guys that can do what he does in the first place, pitching. And then you match it up when he's able to hit 30-plus home runs on the opposite side. It's it's something that this game probably won't ever see. What makes what Shoy is doing more impressive is not only the fact that he can throw 100 and hit a ball 500 feet, is that he can stay healthy through it all. I mean, that's that's just so tough. You know, pitching every, what, six, seven days and just going out there hitting every single day, that's what impresses me the most. I don't know how you can stay on the field and post and just be there every day for your teammates, especially after you guys are eliminated. He keeps doing it day in and day out. I mean, I, as you can tell, I'm a fan. I got a lot of admiration for the guy. I think he's the best player to ever cross the lines um, in, in Major League history. Um, so, yeah, I'm a big fan. I respect him a lot. Yeah, he's such a durable player. Around the clubhouse, the question was asked about MVP picks if they had to pick one. That was asked to Rocco Baldelli. And, of course, he gave a lot of credit to that guy, Aaron Judge, in New York. But he said Shohei Otani is near the top of the list. Still a lot of games left to be played. So he said we'll have to see how it pans out. But something else Rocco Baldelli said is he's not afraid to credit talent on the other team. And though they've only seen the Angels three times this season, he is near the top of the list for Shohei Otani. Uh, Marnie and Tim, he's always crediting uh, Otani, and of course the Twins will have to find a way to manage him here tonight. Yes, and while the Twins have seen the Angels, they have not seen Otani yet. This will be the first time this season, and it's really unique what Otani is doing because not only is he a good hitter he, and a good pitcher, to do those things simultaneously at the level he's doing them is just incredible. Yeah, last time we saw somebody that dominated the league as a pitcher and as a hitter, for me, it was back in Little League. And so to have a guy do it at the major league level, well, we probably haven't seen a guy like this going back all the way to the days of Babe Ruth. So he is a special, special talent. Anybody that can step into the batter's box, like Carlos Correa said, and hit one 400 feet and then go out on the mound and strike you out, well, that's a pretty special talent and something we haven't seen in a long, long time. So we're going to sit back and watch this young man and admire his talents, admire his ability to be able to throw strikes and also hit the ball a long way. It's pretty It's pretty fun to watch when you get right down to it. And if he has an off day tonight, that would be fine. That I'm would sure be with a lot of, fine. A lot of Twins fans. <laughs> Even Rocco Baldelli, as Katie touched on, said that Otani is the single player that Rocco will praise the most as far as opposing players and said it's totally deserving. It gets asked about him a lot, but that what Otani is doing just has caught the attention of a lot of opposing managers. Roy Smalley, you have seen a lot of baseball over the last 40 plus years. How unique and impressive is it what Shohei Otani is doing? Well, he's just the most special player that's ever played the game. I mean, they, they, there's no other way around that. All the things that you all have said, all the things that the uh, Twins players have said, all true. And I've been thinking about this uh, all day, actually, and with, and with excitement about watching him play. He's the best baseball player in the ma major leagues. I don't see how you can say anything else. A guy that does what he does on the mound and at the plate at the same time, day in, day out, He's got to be the best baseball player. Now, another question about the most valuable player, and, and he, he won it last year. He's got better numbers this year. So is he the, is he the most valuable player? Timmy, I've got, uh, I've got a little bit of a problem uh, with that just because of the, the most valuable player tag. It's like most valuable. That's supposed to mean, at least historically, what player led his team to, a, uh, to, to, to the postseason. So I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm not, I, I'm not ready to write off uh, Aaron Judge as MVP yet. Absolutely not. And I'm going to go back to the first part of your statement when you talked about Shohei Otani and the fact that he is the most special player in the league. And I got to give you a lot of credit for that. That's a heck of a moniker for that young man. Most special player. There's nobody else in the league that does what Shohei Otani does. And we've talked about that. Is he the MVP? Absolutely not. 
And I know he was the MVP last year, but when you think about what Aaron Judge uh, has done this year, with the kind of a year that he has had for the New York Yankees, the fact that the New York Yankees are in first place right now, the Angels sit 33 and a half games behind the division leading Houston Astros. And so, yes, he's valuable to his ball club, but he is not more valuable to his team than Aaron Judge is right now. We're talking about a guy who has the possibility of getting a triple crown. Well, I can't imagine anybody would be more valuable to their ball club than having a triple crown with the highest batting average, the most home runs, and the most RBIs for your team, and your team's in first place. That's pretty valuable to me. And if I'm hearing you both correctly, you're both saying that Otani is the single most impressive player in the big leagues, but that this season, the most valuable player in both of your minds, Roy and Tim, <laughs> it is Aaron Judge. Do I have that correct? Well, yeah, I think it is, uh, Marty. And for this reason, the most valuable player award is actually stated somewhere about what that means. It's the player that uh, without whom his team couldn't have had the success that they that they had. And there's a real problem with most valuable player versus player of the year. I mean, who's going to be player of the year last year? No question about it. Otani was the player of the year. Then he they were gave him the MVP award. This year, I think it's probably a toss up in terms of player of the year just because of what he can do, but also what Aaron Judge has done. But most valuable, I got to be with Timmy on this one. I think um, Aaron uh, Aaron Judge. You know, without Aaron Judge, the Yankees probably don't win, and he's doing it down the stretch as well. So the other thing, Marnie and Roy, is the fact that. There are other special players around the league. When you take a look at, at Albert Pujols, well, that's pretty special, too, when you think about a guy that's doing what he's doing at his age. And uh, so there are a lot of special. Twins fans have not seen Shohei Otani's teammate. We haven't seen Mike Trout in a while. He's been on the IL. So I'm looking forward to seeing Mike Trout as well. He also is a special player. But when it comes down to most valuable players, I'm going to give it, just like you, Roy, to Aaron Judge. I think that the kind of year that this guy has had, well, it's nothing short of a monster year. It's not over with yet. Uh, he's got some games left to play, so uh, we're going to see what uh, Aaron Judge does before the end of the season, but we're going to sit back and enjoy Shohei Otani on the mound tonight. And if you're just talking MVP, you also have to consider that Aaron Judge is playing a lot more high-pressure, meaningful games late in the season. Shohei Otani and the Angels are not, so that certainly is a factor. Still to come tonight on Twins Live. Now that that debate is behind us, twin starter Louis Varland is a Twin Cities native making his target field debut tonight. We'll take a closer look at Louis. It's also the first home game for a former Minnesota Mr. Baseball, Matt Walner, from Forest Lake to Target Field, his home debut. But first, a historical perspective on what Shohei Otani is doing with the Angels and how that compares with one of baseball's biggest legends after this. Roberto Clemente, que ha impactado Puerto Rico y el mundo. Esta pieza que estamos haciendo ahora es porque nos impactó la historia de Clemente. Roberto Clemente, one of the outstanding baseball players in the game today. Y no es el deporte, no es la figura, no es los puntos, no es eso, es lo que hizo por la cultura. I always work with the youth in Puerto Rico and I would like to keep working with the youth, which uh, it means a lot to me.
Sports North is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Just a few minutes away from Shohei Otani's pitching debut in Minnesota. He pitched against them once in Anaheim a few years ago, and we hope that the rain will hold off and we'll be able to have an entertaining ball game for you tonight. Now, whether Shohei Otani wins the league MVP again this year or not, you can't deny the fact that he's brought to baseball something it has not seen in more than 100 years. Let's compare Otani's year this year to Babe Ruth's year in 1918. It was the next to last year that Ruth pitched uh, in addition to hit before he became essentially a full time hitter. But look at the similarities in the mark. Now Otani this year figures to make two more starts and so his innings pitch will be similar to what Ruth had in 1918 the ERA similar the whips outstanding now let's look at the batting averages Ruth hit 300 that year on base percentage of 411 OPS 61 runs batted in because he hit only 11 home runs and Otani is going to hit roughly four times that many home runs but the game has changed in 1918 Babe Ruth led the league with 11 home runs. And to show you how much the game has changed in over 100 years, this franchise, then known as the Washington Senators, the team that year hit four home runs, only four. One player, or four players, hit one each, and that was the team total for home runs. So home runs, even though Ruth only hit 11 of them that year, really not much a part of the game at all. That Senators team had 47 triples that year and only four home runs. So, yeah, we're watching baseball history tonight when we see Shohei Otani do so well on the mound and at the plate. We'll be back with more from Target Field in just a moment. Here are the first images. Hello, everyone. You don't have to leave the solar system to watch MLB Network. Just sign in with your TV provider info at MLBnetwork.com or through the MLB app. MLB Network, just about anywhere in the known universe. of 23 games have been decided by three runs or less, including two of the three games this season. We'll see what's in store in the opener ahead. Welcome back to Target Field. I'm Katie Storm. While the Twins have used nine different starters over their last 25 games, tied for the most among American League teams. Now, one of those starters is Louis Varland, and tonight he'll toe the rubber for the third time in his major league career and the first time here at Target Field. It's certainly a significant night for the St. Paul native who will have some special fans here in downtown Minneapolis in attendance. Extremely excited. It's going to be electric. My home debut. Uh, everybody's coming out, as you can imagine, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm leaving 
close to like 40 tickets, but I told a lot of people to buy their own tickets. So I have my like high school buddies, high school coaches, high school teammates, college teammates, college coaches, all my family, my dads, my parents, friends. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a ball. You can just sense the excitement for the 24-year-old. Now, Rocco Baldelli said he expects him, of course, to have a very great night ahead. He said he can't get much better than this, starting here at Target Field and going up against a guy like Shohei Otani. He said he expects him to slow things down, of course, not going for his pace, but more so his mindset and his emotions out there on the mound. And Marnie and Tim, pretty special because, of course, a lot of new things for Louis Varlins. He even needed some assistance from the security guard finding his way to the clubhouse here. So <laughs> it'll be a very fun night ahead. Wow, how about that? Making your first start at a new ballpark, I suppose. How would you know where the clubhouse is? We've already seen several fans walking around here on the concourse with their Louis Varland jerseys on and T-shirts. And maybe they are friends and family members of Louis Varland. Certainly going to be a big night for him. You think about first, first start, first strikeout. Well, Louis already had those. Still looking for his first win. Maybe that'll come in his first home game tonight here at Target Field. Harmon Arts tonight tilt looking at the other two starts. Marlin has made his debut against the Yankees in New York where he had the strikeout against Aaron Judge. That was his first that he gave up a home run to Judge as well in that same game. And then Barland also pitched the first game of the doubleheader in Cleveland last Saturday. Not as sparkling in numbers in that second outing, Tim, but just based on these two, that's all we have to go on right now for Louis Varland with for big league numbers anyway. What has stood out to you about this run? Well, I really like the way he handled himself in New York. Anytime you step on to the field in Yankee Stadium, that's the big stage. That's where you want to be. You're going to make a, a major league debut. You might as well go ahead and make it in Yankee Stadium. I mean, he thought he quitted himself very nicely. Yeah, he gave up the home run there and Judge, but uh, he did a pretty good job of staying away from the barrel of the bat. So it didn't quite go as well as he would have liked in the Cleveland. Cleveland roughed him up a little bit. But again, uh, I thought he quitted himself pretty well. And so thinking about the fact that he's going to make his home debut tonight in front of all of his friends and family and uh, telling people, yeah, I can put you on the pass list and then telling somebody else, Hey, you're going to have to pay your way into the ballpark tonight, but this is going to be a very exciting moment for him. And uh, think about it, Marnie. I remember when last year he was named the minor league pitcher of the year and you interviewed him up yep. in the stands. Yep. And so that's right. He's already had an exciting moment <laughs> here at Target Field. And so I expect tonight <laughs> that he's going to do quite well against this uh, the Los Angeles Angels team, and I think he's going to be pretty excited, but this is a young man that is, yes, this is not an audition, but he is also pitching to be in the mix by the time spring yeah. training rolls around next and year. And after that interview, I escorted Louie and his family up to the broadcast booth, and they were so excited to meet Dick Bramer and Dan Gladden and Corey Provis and Justin Morneau, and they were taking pictures, and now here he is going to pitch tonight yeah, at pitch, this Pitching on this park. mound is going to be no big deal tonight. <laughs> Not after a tour of the press box that I gave him last year. Louis Varlin making his home debut tonight, and so is another Minnesota native, Matt Wallner of Forest Lake, trying to make an impact in his first game with the home fan fans next. The game is changing, and so are the shows that talk about it. MLB Network's Off Base. What's going on? A modern baseball show for the modern baseball fan. It doesn't get much better than sitting around and talking baseball. Only on MLB Network. Angels, and we are back here on Twins Live. I'm Marnie Gellner 
with Tim Laudner. We talked about Louis Varlin making his home debut at Target Field tonight. He'll be the starting pitcher for the Twins. But we have a starting outfielder tonight, another Minnesota native, Matt Walner from Forest Lake, who got called up a week ago. He played in all seven games, including a doubleheader in Cleveland, since his call-up. But he has not played yet at Target Field. These seven games on the road, though, Timmy, pretty impressive. Yeah, I like this young man as well. And uh, again, we're talking about a couple of kids that are going to get opportunities there at the end of the season. And you want to do your best to make the most of those opportunities and get your name in the mix and come in, put on a show, show the manager, show the organization what your skill level is. And uh, this young man also, just like Louis Barlow, is going to make his home debut. He's going to put a Twins uniform on, a home Twins uniform on for the first time. His family traveled around with him from Cleveland uh, down to Kansas City. I hope they made it into the ballpark tonight to watch this young man play. Uh, pretty exciting. He hit a home run off a pretty good pitcher in uh, Shane Bieber the other day. And he continues to put the barrel of the bat on the baseball. So I like this young man as well. I like Louis Varlin. Going to be a very, very special night for both of these kids in the ballpark tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun watching the opposing pitcher. We're going to have a lot of fun watching the Twins pitcher. And we're going to have a lot of fun watching the Twins outfield. I hope these guys can put on a good show for the fans to come down and watch them play tonight. And we're going to start this ball game on time. A great pitching matchup tonight. Louis Varlin and Shohei Otani. The Twins and the Angels from Target Field after this. Every time he takes the field, he competes not only against the other team, but against the toughest adversary, himself. MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network.
plus a dozen games left for the Minnesota Twins in the regular season. Six at home, six on the road, and the Twins are hoping that there's a little home field magic left in the 2022 season. Tonight, the first of three between the Twins and the Angels, and we welcome you to Target Field. Dick Bramer along with Roy Smalley. Quite a story. Louis Varland, last year's Twins minor league pitcher of the year, and he had another good year this year to the point where tonight he'll make his first Target Field start. And in front of the hometown crowd, he thinks he was pumped up in Yankee Stadium. He's going to be awfully pumped up uh, tonight. He, what a neat story this is. Louis Varland in the big leagues pitching at ho in his hometown against Shohei Otani. This is a really, really fun matchup, and I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, watching how the youngster handles what are going to be incredible butterflies. He's got the stuff to do it, and we see the, the, the stats here. Uh, one a really good start against New York, one not as good against Cleveland. He's going to be looking for more of the former tonight. And the Mr. Clean Magic stats show you what uh, he has done in his first two major league starts. And so the Twins now will have to face Shohei Otani. And offensively, it's going to be a challenge for them against this very talented baseball player. There, I, I just don't know what else to say about a, a guy that uh, does what he does at the plate and is capable of doing what he does and has done uh, on the mound. He's just the best baseball player there is in the game. I mean, nobody can touch him in terms of all the things that he can do. It's a toss up whether he is the MVP or Aaron Judge this year is the MVP. But I just don't think there's any question that he's the best baseball player. And in terms of pitching, what the Twins are looking at this tonight, oh, 98, 99 miles an hour fastball, a big slider, and a, and a devastating split finger pitch. He's the, he, you can't even say he's the real deal. He's, he's beyond any deal we've ever seen. Coors Light beating the pressure, won the league MVP last year. A very strong candidate once again this year, and he's about to make his target field debut on the mound. So the rookie against the veteran, the superstar, should be a fun night. And Louis Varlin will make his first target field start when we come home.
Brought to you by Northland Ford. Visit BuyFordNow.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. By Grand Casino, let your story begin. And by Luther Group. Shop the Twin Cities' largest selection of vehicles at LutherAuto.com. The Twins and Angels meeting for the second time this season. They face Shohei Otani for just the first time since 2018. It's the final homestand on this rainy Friday night of the regular season. The Twins look to start it in the win column. Welcome back to Target Field. I'm Katie Storm. Well, just 12 games remain on the regular season schedule for the Minnesota Twins, and they, of course, seek every win possible. Tonight, two hometown kids will look to help with that. Louis Varland and Matt Walner making their Target Field debut. It's a significant night ahead for the two who will have some special fans here in attendance. Yeah, you know, with Louie being on the mound, being the starting pitcher, you end up talking about the starting pitcher, but but I'm sure uh, Maddie's going to have more than a handful of people here that are pretty excited, and uh, it's, it's uh, you know, kind of makes sense. It's Minnesota, and the weather's kind of turned on us a little bit. It's a little cooler tonight, and they're making their debuts. I think it all makes sense pretty good, and they'll be at home. I think they'll be, uh, they're, they're more than okay playing in this in this weather. Extremely excited. It's going to be electric. My home debut. Uh, everybody's coming out, as you can imagine, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We grew up going to Twins games, being a Twins fan, so um, the first one at home will, will be pretty cool. Two guys that grew up in Twins Tory getting to play here in Twins Tory. It is certainly a special night ahead for the two and a lot of new things, of course. Louis Varland, he needed some direction from a security guard as he was finding his way through Target Field today. He needed to find the clubhouse, and thankfully he had some help. Of course, a lot of new for the two of these guys. It'll be a fun night ahead as they look to help their team back into the win column. Dick Bramer and Roy Smalley lead you up to first pitch here from downtown Minneapolis next on Valley Sports North. Baseball's biggest moments are live on MLB Big Inning. MLB.tv's nightly show takes you from game to game for all the grand slams, no hitters, walk offs, and more as they happen. Wow, he can do it all! Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. This is some kind of awesome. After your game ends, the action's just heating up on MLB Big Inning every night on MLB.tv. here at Target Field for the second time today. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. A big moment for the young man. And it's amazing how convenient he has made it for his friends and relatives to watch him pitch from North St. Paul High School then to Bob Barnes Field at Concordia St. Paul which is just off Hamlin Avenue to CHS Field in St. Paul and now the big one here at Target Field. Bill Nevin, the interim manager for the Angels, replacing the fired Joe Madden. And the Menards batting order for the Angels. Luis Ringifo leading things off, and Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, 
Taylor Ward, Mike Ford, Matt Duffy, Mickey Moniak, Matt Stassi, and Levon Soto. And the aforementioned Louis Varlin on the mound here in his home debut for the Minnesota Twins. Look at his numbers from the two starts he's made thus far. He's going to look to dazzle him here in front of the hometown fans tonight. Rangifo will lead things off. If you've seen Varlin pitch, you know that you better have your beverages for the night, your snacks for the night <laughs> ready because he does not waste any time out there on the mound. Uh, it's wonderful to, to watch. He, he gets a sign. He's ready to go. Let's go. Rangifo, Trout, and Otani. That's to center field. Coming in is Contreras and a diving catch to get this homestand started. He had to come a long way to make that catch one away. Terrific play by Contreras, and there's nothing that will calm a uh, young, excitable pitcher down any more than something like this on the first batter that he faces. What a big play that is for his pitcher. Excellent play. As you saw, frozen momentarily. You often see center fielders freeze on that ball uh, off the bat, uh, not wanting to misjudge it uh, and come in on the ball, but the Vena, his speed paid off. 1 0 now to Mike Trout. And now a strike. Had a few pinch me moments at Yankee Stadium facing Aaron Judge, striking him out the first time, giving up a home run. But now another one here facing Mike Trout and then Shohei Otani. High fly center field. An easier play for Contreras. Two away. Northland Fort defense for the Minnesota Twins. Outfield of Jake Kay, Mark Contreras, and Matt Walner. Gio Urshela, Jermaine Palacios, left side of the infield. Nick Gordon, Jose Miranda on the right side, and Gary Sanchez doing the catch. Six pitches, two outs, and now with two quick outs, now he gets to face the pitcher. <laughs> Chopper, Palacios, and a seven pitch, one, two, three inning for Louis Varlin. Hi, I'm CC Sabathia. If win reality was around when I was pitching, I would have hated it. But my son Carson's a hitter, and I don't pitch anymore. So I love win reality. Yeah, the camera's over here. Be ready for real. Oh. Win reality. Hi. We're Warby Parker. And we're all about making vision care convenient. That's why we developed the Virtual Vision Test app. Use it to renew your expired glasses or contacts prescription from home with your phone in about 10 minutes. If everything looks good, a doctor will renew your prescription for $15. It's as easy as reading the eye chart at a doctor's office. Except you're at home, on your phone, like you probably are right now. Download Virtual Vision Test today. Hey, it's me, the summer breeze. I just flew back into town. Let's get outside. Much better. A 1 2 3 first inning for Louis Varlin. He's not afraid to emote in the dugout either. It's just like he's out there playing a game. A delight to watch. 53 degrees. There was some concern whether we would even get started on time 
or at all here tonight but I based on the, the latest weather that I've looked at looks like we'll uh, have a good night for baseball cool but nice and dry an arch batting order for the twins as Luis arrives and in the leadoff spot as the designated hitter Jose Miranda Nick Gordon Jay Orchella Jake Cave Gary Sanchez Matt Walter Mark Contreras and Jermaine Palacio. And on the mound, a guy you may not have heard of before, but his name is Shohei Otani, and he's pretty good. He's pretty good at baseball. You look at his, his numbers there. Remarkable that he has the kind of stuff that he has, plays every day, and then on the fifth day, he goes out there. His whip is only a one. I mean, it just uh, the, the things that he does with six different pitches, and here's the thing. That sinker down there is only, he only throws it about 3% of the time. Talking to Mark Gubaza with the Angels, the color announcer for the Angels, he said he's starting to throw a sinker now a lot, and you should see this thing run. So you just never know what kind of thing this talented guy is going to break out, either on the mound or at the plate. Well, six pitches, unless human anatomy has changed since I took it in middle school, pitch com is necessary for this guy because <laughs> catcher can't signal six different pitches unless he's using the pitch gun. Well he can shake off five times and then everybody knows what this is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well here's Luis Arise leading things off against Otani. Slap foul. It is lightly raining here now. Arise at 313. Aaron Judge so far tonight is 0 for 2 and his average is down to 315. So this is going to be a, a riveting batting race the way it looks like and arise happy to be off the road and hitting where he has hit so well chopper and it's Rinkifo throwing him out one away Northland for defense for the Angels Mickey Moniak in left Mike Trout in center Taylor Ward in right Duffy Soto Rinkifo for the infielders and Max Stassi behind the plate. And what we just saw Otani do with Luis to rise is the problem with hitting against uh, Otani because you step in the box and you know that there's 98 miles an hour out there, either a four seamer or a running fastball. He doesn't throw his cutter much, 7% of the time so far this year on average. And he just threw two cutters to, to uh, arise. He's liable to do anything. Down and away, ball one. There's a big, a, a big breaking ball. He generally or the slider. That one a little bit bigger. And Mark Gubaza also told me he, the other day he was experimenting with. Now I'm going to throw my slider for a little bit more from the side. So he just, he, without really practicing much, he just took it out there in the game. Two and zero. Oh. He was supposed to pitch here against the Twins back in 2018. He pitched against the Twins in Anaheim that year, but supposed to be a pitching here at Target Field. And then right before the Angels arrived here, they discovered he needed Tommy John surgery. So he missed the rest of the 2018 season and all of 2019. 2-0 to Jose Miranda. 3-0. And you can see him blowing into his hand. It's reasonable to think he probably hasn't pitched in what, 52 degrees or what do we say 53 degrees something like that. This might be the coldest game he's ever pitched in. Well, that's 92 but we've seen him on television pitch much uh, with a much faster fastball. Yeah, three and zero. Oh, get me over fastball. Just make sure I throw a strike and get another pitch at least. And that misses at 96. And the Twins get a base runner against Otani. I thought Carlos Correa brought up an interesting point. Correa not in the lineup tonight. Brought up an interesting point about the wonder of Otani. All year long this year, we've seen pitchers break down. We've seen position players, hitters break down. This guy's doing both 
by all accounts he's as healthy as he <laughs> was at the start of the year. Yeah. It's he's an incredible specimen. There's no no question about that. And I mean, you think about what a pitcher has to do. He'll he pitches and then a couple of days later he'll throw in the bullpen. He's got to throw in the bullpen and play that night and the out in, as a DH. Fouled away off the bat of Nick Gordon. And he continues to stay healthy doing doing what he has to do to be ready to pitch every fifth day and then the other times going up there and hitting the ball for 450 feet. Time controlling dug into Gordon's foot or ankle, so now the Twins will have runners at first and second with nobody out. You know, they just really spiked a slider there, overthrew a slider. Drills Nick right above the ankle, it looked like, yeah. Urshela will bat with a couple of men aboard. Brown's crew with the tarp for the mound with this rain coming down here might try to complete this inning and might have a rain delay one inning into the game. It is coming down rather hard right now. There's Larry DeVito, the head groundskeeper. And another misfire. Ten pitches for Otani and only four strikes. Yeah, he's throwing a lot of sliders, and he will throw an awful lot of sliders uh, during the course of a game. And for the guy that can throw at 98 and he's got a great split finger as well. Surprising that he would throw that many sliders. He's not in control of that breaking ball. 2 and 0. And you can see whether you've got high definition television or not. <laughs> it's coming down pretty hard. That we would I mean, radar is so technologically advanced now. I got to believe this was anticipated and that we started on time. And now he's having problems with the pitch com, and maybe the rain's impacting that somehow. But I got to believe the belief was that this would just be a passing shower. He's not even close. And whether it's the footwork, the dampness of the ball, the low 50s temperature, he just doesn't look like he's comfortable out there. Three and like, Yeah, it doesn't look like he's uh, uncomfortable on the mound necessarily with his, where he's landing and how he's landing. And now they're loaded up for Jake Cave. Well, the Twins need to get something out of this. You're generally not going to get many opportunities like this against Shohei Otani. Ryan bounced out. Then a walk, a hit batter, another walk. And Cave will bat. When, if, when you're in a situation like Jake Cave is uh, here now with the bases loaded, you, you're watching Otani to pitch the hitters, your teammates before you. He's not getting, have, he doesn't have his control of his slider. You think about all the other pitches that he might throw, but the, the main thing is, especially early count, get yourself a fastball in the middle of the plate, stay in the middle of the field, and get some runs in. That's the one you want right there. It just, it just figures that the way with a guy at third base 
with the way that he had not controlled the slider and thrown it, spiked a few of them. The chances of him throwing nasty sliders right out of the right out of the shoot here are not probably not too good. Range let up a little bit. One strike to cave. Line drive it's dropped and they'll get one and a run will score on a double play. Miranda came in to score right before the tag of Gordon trying to get to third base. The Angels got the double play but the run scored. And put it up on the board yet but I saw Miranda cross the plate before the tag. Watch it all unfold here with Rangifo not catching the line drive. So there's out number two. Take control of your health by boosting your force field, the immune system. With the Aura Ring, you can listen to your body's signals and raise your defenses. Aura tells you when your temperature is higher than normal, how to improve your sleep, or if your heart rate shows signs of stress, so you can decide to push yourself or to lie low. Live smarter, stronger, healthier with the Aura Ring. Aura. less than this guy. What? And it's not just sports tickets. It's also concerts. Performances, too. Oh, come on! Download Game Time. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. Lead a good start for Louis Varland. We mentioned this was the second time he's taken the mound here at Target Field today. This was about an hour before game time with the tarp on the field. For the best coverage in the game, we'll check out the T Mobile coverage cam showing Louis Varland walking out to the mound, standing on the mound with the tarp. Okay. And then walking off. Just want to make sure that the whole plate's still 60 <laughs> feet, six inches. And, you know, here in my whole ballpark, my third big league start. Taylor Ward takes upstairs ball on. I think that's really cute. We uh, all of us every player I think in the first first game in the big leagues or the first game in your home park. You, you walk out on the field and you look all around. I mean, you just look at look at everything. He wasn't going to get a chance to do that other than go out there on the tarp. I think that's great. One and one to Ward and now two and one. Second deck, Taylor Ward's 20th of the year, and it's one apiece. Looked like a cutter there. He threw a very nice one. The pitch before that was off the plate, but it had it had good velocity, good movement. And this one, when you throw a cutter, the up that was a cutter. You see the spin on the on the fast on the ball. You throw a cutter. Right there in the middle of the plate. They go a long ways. And that'll bring up Mike Ford in a tie game. Ford signing a minor league deal coming out of the Yankee organization. And he takes ball one. Out in front, one and one. Mm 
Ford hit just under 200 in parts of three years with the New York Yankees. Two and one. Got the ball back from the catcher. Get back on the rubber. Dig your right foot in. Look in for the sign. Let's go. Popped up near the Angel dugout. And no play for Sanchez. Two and two. Well, I will say this about Louis Varlin tonight, pitching here in front of all of his people. He is pumped up. He's two or three miles an hour fast, faster on both his fastball and his cutter so far. Faster than how he averaged his first two outings. Breaking ball got him. First strikeout of the night for Louis Varlin. And that'll bring up Matt Duffy. So high slider here, not where you want to throw it. Uh, he threw two high changeups, not where they he wants to throw it. The arm speed on the changeups good. The, the uh, fastball velocity and, and spin looks really good like that right there. That, that's got a little Joe Ryan in him right there. He's got a little late life. He's throwing 94, 95. We've seen 96. So I mean, I think the early reviews from his first two starts and now here the first inning and change. That's a good cutter there. That's the spot you want to throw the cutter. The early reviews, I think, got to find the release point on change up especially. Get it to left handers. Get the ball down in the zone and then sliders out there. That's yep. That's exactly what what he's got to get the feel of. Can I throw my and when I don't throw my fastball? Can the slider be out there? Or can the change up be knee high or, or lower? Two strikes to Duffy. And a foul ball. Quick and easy for Barland got through the first three batters on just seven pitches. No 14 pitches later, have a hard time disposing of Matt Duffy. And in the front row of our level here made a nice barehanded catch. Another 0 2 coming to Matt Duffy. Five two strike fouls for Matt Duffy. And Varlin continues to pump strikes. Center field. And Contreras has been kept busy. Out number two. Well, in his first inning of work, he had to go through a couple of tough hitters. First, Mike Trout. It was a pretty good fastball there to, to uh, Mike. Gets a fly ball and then jams uh, Otani a bit. One of the things about. <laughs> And then when he gets to pass those two guys, then he kind of hangs one to uh, Taylor Ward. You got to be pumped up in front of your whole crowd, pumped up to, to pitch to Trout and Otani, and then try not to let down when you get past those guys. Moniak's the batter. Down and away, ball one. One of the things that you have to overcome as a young player when you first uh, in your first few games. You're, you're pitching or playing, hitting against guys that you idolize, guys that, you know, I mean, every player that plays in the big leagues, and as a kid, they knew all, you know, we all knew all the players, we all had favorites, we all had guys we thought were, were, were just absolute stars in our eyes. And you go out there and you face them, and you have to get that out of your mind, because you, you have to, 
you have to believe that you belong there against the guys that you idolize or it's going to be not going to last very long. Way out in front. Great change up. There. Two strikeouts. Well, a solo home run to start the second inning. It's one apiece. And here are the first images. Hello, everyone. You don't have to leave the solar system to watch MLB Network. Just sign in with your TV provider info at MLBnetwork.com or through the MLB app. MLB Network, just about anywhere in the known universe. President of Baseball Operations Derek Falvey addressed some injuries for the Twins and unfortunate news for Byron Buxton and is he has been shut down for the remainder of the season. He'll be having arthroscopic surgery on his knee. The hip issue he said is essentially just a muscle strain but his knee will be needing attention. Now Jorge Polanco's knee fortunately will not need surgery. It's more so a tendonitis issue and he's been dealing with soreness in that so they aren't ruling him out but Falvey did say guys that they may run out of calendar space. So we'll keep a close eye on him, but certainly some unfortunate news for Byron Buxton. And a positive off of that is that they're giving him some extra runway to get back and get an extra head start on getting better this offseason. Yeah, and with Byron, that's the appropriate term, right? Runway. Well, and you saw on our slow zoom in there, you saw Tyler Malley, he's done for the year. Max Kepler told me he's hoping to come back and play sometime. He's going to test some things out, I think he said tomorrow. And, uh, so we might see some guys back some guys no. Here's Gary Sanchez leading off the second inning. That is a fair ball right over the bag and a long throw and the first base umpire Chad Whitson said he came down on the bag before Sanchez got there but the twins will take a look at it. Nonetheless Duffy's throw pulled Ford into a leap and the question is whose foot got there first. Nice play by Duffy to stay with that hop that went sideways on him. It looked to me like Ford just barely got that foot down. Yep. yep. One down in the second. And so far the Twins have put three balls in play against Otani. Nothing has left the infield. Here's Matt Walner, his target field debut as well. Breaking ball again. Not close to the strike zone and to the backstop. Ball one. An impressive road trip for Walner. Yeah, I really like his actions at the plate uh, very much, and not just because he's got some hits here uh, early. I, I, I just think everything about him, his mechanics, and the, the way he stands up there, I think, very good. You know, he reminds me a little bit of Kyle Tucker. His swing oh. reminds me a little bit of uh, All-Star right fielder for the Astros, Kyle Tucker. I mentioned in Kansas City with the great throwing arm in the outfield. My goodness. Let's rocket into the net. Little Joey Gallo. Yeah, a little bit. I I think he's got a way better swing than, uh, than Gallo. He's got he's got fewer holes, it looks like. I mean he's had 25 at bat, right, so we right. know. But so far, 
couple things that I've seen. It looks like he has fewer uh, fewer holes, not, and he's hung in against left-handers pretty well. That's maybe the thing that has impressed me the most. Missing outside, two and two. Getting a chance to play because of the assorted injuries that Max Kepler is dealing with. In the dirt now full count with Contreras on deck. That's a cutter there. That's one of his key strikeout pitches. He'll, when he's got control of the slider, which he hasn't had so far, we're talking about Otani, of course. The slider and that split finger pitch are his are his real go-to two-strike pitches when he's trying to strike somebody out. Rain is still coming down, but not nearly as intently or intensely as it was when Otani walked to and hit a batter to allow the Twins to fill the bases. Twins caught a bit of a bad break there. Jake Cave hit the ball awfully hard, but right at the second baseman, and then it was a double play because the runners didn't know where to go, whether he was going to catch it in the air or not. And because the second out on that play was not a force play, Sanchez crossed the plate before the tag. The run counted. Another 3 2 to Matt Walner. And he takes a walk. And Walner. The recipient of the third walk issued by Otani that'll bring up Mark Contreras. He's had a game where he walked four. That was a loss to the Tigers at Comerica Park. One other start where he walked three. And that was a win. Six shutout innings against Oakland. Loading up with about as many left handed starters as they could. They could have started Sandy Leone behind the plate rather than Gary Sanchez, the switch hitter. And it's not like lefties are having a whole lot of success against Otani. Lefties hitting 229, righties 199. One strike. Swing and a miss at 98. Yeah, he's starting to get loose a little bit. He, like any other pitcher, has to have the fat. He has to show hitters that fastball just like that in order for the, the split finger, especially, to, to be uh, as effective as it as it normally is. It's between Tommy Watkins and the line. When you're a hitter and you're seeing the fastball come up there at 98, and then the, the split finger with the same arm speed, it comes up there looking like a fastball. And he throws his split around 89 or 90 miles an hour. It's close enough to the fastball that you swing over the top of the downward movement pretty, pretty readily. Contreras continues in an 0 2 hole. And now in the dirt, nice block by Stassi. Yeah, that was the that was a split there. He just Spiked that one as well. One and two to Contreras. So we got a miss. Now two down in the second inning. That'll bring up Palacios. You can see why he likes his slider so much. This, this, this ball's got great downward movement. The 
might even have been. I don't think it's a curveball. I think it was just a real, real good slider. And you see the spin. You think that's going to be coming down and into a left-hander, and that, that one went straight down. Tough assignment for Palacios. Five hits, all singles, in 48 at bats this year. 96 at the knee. And that was the sinker. I don't know if, if you could see that uh, that movement there. We mentioned that he was starting to throw, try to throw a running sinking fastball. That that was it right there at 96 at the knees. One and one. And now the range picked up in intensity again. Don't have a hit, but half the batters have reached because of Otani's erratic control. Shattered bat, and part of it got Otani. If it missed him, I don't know how. And he's politely picking up the pieces of the bat. But the dangerous end of it, lengthwise, may have gone between his legs. Missed him altogether. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, thank goodness it didn't hit him. Or if it did, it was it was a glancing blow. A glancing <laughs> blow. That could have been so terrible. It could have been awful. And that's was the look on his face was a recognition of how he literally and figuratively dodged a real issue there. Two two. And a breaking ball gets a swing and a miss. Bottom or top of the third coming up in a one one game. game is changing and so are the shows that talk about it. MLB Network's Off Base. What's going on everyone? A modern baseball show for the modern baseball fan. It doesn't get much better than sitting around and talking baseball. Only on MLB Network. Today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Jackie Robinson searching home run into the left field stand. Crowd on its feet and in unison. This one has a chance. Home run by Piazza. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. Welcome to the first night of MLB Network. Number 600 for Jim Tony. <laughs> that ball is gone. 106. That would be a new record. It is gone. Oh, what a catch by Mike Trout. The Cubs have finally won it all. The Atlanta. Homestand, final homestand of the year, and we're tied at one. The rain coming down now, about as hard it was as it was in the first inning. And Louis Varland, and I don't want to claim to know whether Otani's pitched in conditions like this. At least his home games, you'd think, would be <laughs> not like this. <laughs> not like this. I, I will guarantee well, you. Varland, Varland, you know, pitched high school ball and weather worse than this, college ball and. Weather worse than this. 
Here's Max Stassi to lead off the Angels third inning. Big pop up and Sanchez circling around it and never got leather on it. And whether the rain falling as he's looking up had anything to do with it or not. No play no error. Not much wind. But if Sanchez blinked a few times trying to keep his eyes on the ball you can understand why. So one strike to Max Stassi. Missed inside at 95. Varland obviously a great baseball player to have climbed so quickly through the Twins system. But he also was an outstanding high school wrestler to the point where he started wrestling for the varsity in North St. Paul High School as a seventh grader and holds the school record for wins as a wrestler. Now I asked him the other day seventh grade what weight class did you wrestle and he said 103 and he weighs more than twice that now. But he wrestled varsity as a seventh grade. Oh that was right there. It was right there. And, and we just see that so often with the umpire sitting over the inside shoulder closest to the hitter. And the target inside and then the pitcher misses the target but not the strike zone and the umpire is has already made up his mind. So it ends up being a leadoff walk to Stassi. Sanchez didn't catch the pop up. Hunter Wendell said didn't call a strike. And now a message from the Minnesota Lottery. Number nine batter Levon Soto will bring Gio Urshela in on the infield grass. Anticipating a possible bunt. Outside of ball. Soto just 15 at bats and three hits. One home run. Well, I would say this about Louis Barlin. So far, I, I really like his fastball. Very Joe Ryan like. It looks, it, you could tell by the way the hitters are reacting. It's late life. Line drive hooked into the right field corner. Stassi will go to third and the Angels get a walk from the number eight hitter and now a single from the number nine hitter. Yeah another cutter in the middle of the plate and that, and that pitch it, you really have to be strategic and it, it, with when you decide to throw it and you can see it right here just kind of that's just it, when you're a big league hitter and you got a guy still 95 96 and you get a little cutter at 90 right in the middle that's like feels like a batting practice fastball. You have to be strategic about when you throw that so that you can make sure you the location is, is really good because bad location with any pitch is not good with a cutter it, it hitters just seem to really react well to that. Gifo takes up and away ball one. Gifo hit one off the end of his bat, and Mark Contreras made a great diving catch to get the game started. And a double play! A very soft line drive hit right to Miranda, who came down and stepped on the bag two away. A nice awareness of it. You see that positional awareness by Miranda. Holding the runner on, you'll see he's holding the runner on. He comes off, but not too far, and he knows he pretty much knows where the base is as he's coming down from his jump. That's we we'll see him right here. He just, yep, I'm right there. 
And now Trout with a foul over the Twins dugout. Trout with a fly to center field in the first inning as well. Now a line drive base hit to left. And Stassi will come in from third base, and the Angels have the lead. Trout didn't play when the Twins were in Anaheim a couple months ago. But a base hit here, and it's two to one. And now Otani. Well, he got it through a high fastball by Trout with, with uh, to get a foul ball for the first strike, and then came back there again, not quite as high. Trout says not two times in a row. Miranda steps on the bag, so a leadoff walk comes around to score, and it's two to one. A brief moment was all Roberto Clemente ever needed. He displayed incredible talent as a World Series champion, MVP, and 15-time All-Star. He fought injustice and helped those in need throughout his life of service. And he inspired generations of players and fans over the past 50 years to make a difference in their communities. Roberto Clemente changed baseball forever, ensuring his brief moment remains eternal. Hello everyone. You don't have to leave the solar system to watch MLB Network. Just sign in with your TV provider info at MLBnetwork.com or through the MLB app. MLB Network, just about anywhere in the known universe. on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> and uh, Otani's going to have to uh, speed it up here for next year, isn't he? Yes. And, and Louis Varland is, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Dick, pitching in the minor leagues with the pitch clock, and he's, I think, not only conditioned to that, but I think it, it just looks like that's his personality anyway. Now, one difference I think was apparent there as I'm looking at Otani, he was looking at runners, and the pitch clock will be 20 seconds next year. If a pitcher has runners on base, 15 seconds. If no one's on base, see what the Twins can do. Second time through the order, even though they got a run, they didn't get much done. Otani with three ground outs, actually four outs on ground balls and two strikeouts. With the balls in play, all in the infield, and now Arise, who bounced out to start the ball game for the Twins, will get his second look at Otani. Aaron Judge is 0 for 3. His average is down to 314. So a hit here should get a rise tied with Judge. There's a pitch inside. The looper short left. Calling for it is Soto. One away. And that'll bring up Jose Miranda. Again with the cutter to Luis Arise, and he's he's getting it in on uh, Luis. One of the things that I've noticed is the rise swing is is just a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, a little bit from uh, uh, from underneath than, it, than he normally is when he's 
spray and hits all over the place. And that cutter's gonna that cutter can eat you up if your if your swing's a little longer. So you look at it right here, the ball's cutting in on his hands, and see he's just a little bit back shoulder down, swing a little bit longer, and, and that cutter running in on your hands when you're swinging like that, that can that'll result in uh, below the label contact. 1 0 to Miranda. Big pop up, and again, it's Soto calling for it. Two down. Well, Rocco Baldelli said that. Rises hamstring is getting better, and they expect at some point in this homestand that they'll, they'll put him out in the field. We have gotten Justin Morno's thoughts about how your legs can impact your swing. Absolutely, and so so important to Luis Arias. I've talked to him about that. He's he's made it clear, you know, not just to me, obviously a lot of people, but we we did a. a uh, a segment on how he prepares to hit and how he hits and he was talking to me about how important his legs are what he tries to do with his legs. You got a hamstring issue and your legs are that important to you as any hitter as they are for any hitter but especially in this case arise at least in his mind that that's going to that's going to mess you up both physically and mentally a bit. Want to know to Gordon. 37 pitches only. 18 strikes for Otani, and now another pitch out of the zone, 2 0. Show to what Otani is doing in 2022, and baseball really hasn't seen anything like it since Babe Ruth in 1918. Combination pitcher, hitter. Back then, they only played 130 games, so Ruth's numbers were down a little bit lower in terms of hits, home runs, RBIs, and all that. Swung on and missed two and two. You got to remember that was in the dead ball era too. Right. It, 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 you know you could. Ruth, over, led over. The, Ruth led the league with 11 yeah, home runs. Home run Baker was uh, nicknamed home run. He hit nine home runs <laughs> one year. Two and two. That's off the end of the bat. Another busted bat. And this one flopping foul. And as I said in the pregame segment, this franchise wasn't in Minnesota. It was still in Washington, D.C. And the Washington Senators in 1918, the team hit four home runs. One of them by four different players, two of them pitchers, one of them Walter Johnson. Four home runs hit the entire season. So it's a different game now with Otani. He's not going to catch Aaron Judge, obviously, but he's got 34. And Ruth. Hit nearly three times as many home runs that year as the entire Washington Senators team. Two and two to Nick Gordon. Hit hard to center, but Trout is there. And Otani sprints off the mound with a two to one lead.
Welcome to the first night of MLB Network. Number 600 for Jim Tony. That ball is gone. 106. That would be a new record. It is caught. Oh, what a catch by Mike Trout. The Cubs have finally won it all. The Atlanta Braves are world champions. Sox come to town next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Final series of the year at Target Field, and tickets start as low as nine dollars. You can get your tickets at TwinsBaseball.com/slash tickets. Ten American oh, League batting titles. Two. Yeah, ten of them. Rod Carew with seven. Tony Oliva with three in a span of 15 years. So, <laughs> if Louis Arise can win a batting title. He'll be the fifth different twin to win a batting title. Kirby Puckett won one. Joe Maurer won three. Two of the best hitters the game has ever seen. Taylor Ward hit a home run his first time up. A check swing there. Evens the count one and one. And you played with Carew. And Tony. You right, had, right at, at the, the very end, end of his career. Very end of Tony's career. Yeah. But he, uh, he was a player in 1976 when I got there and, and uh, became a, uh, a player coach. Could still hit, couldn't run. Maybe needed to hit the ball out of the ballpark, but he, he could do that still. Do I remember your uncle, the manager, Gene Mock, leading Tony off and then replacing him? Oh, yes. With, with yep. a pinch hitter, right? As yep. a designated hitter. Yep. Said, give me, give me one good swing. And Three and two. In a situation where I don't really need you to run. Full count to Ward, leading off the fourth inning with the Angels up two to one. And at that time, he's rung up. That's a great fastball there. 95 late life, right on the outer perimeter of the strike zone. That's a fastball that has impressed me. I really like that fastball. One down, and now Mike Ford struck out his first time up. So many great memories of uh, playing with Tony O and, and, and Rodney. You know, it's just such a blessing to me. I'm just so honored to, you know, to be able to know those guys as well as I do and have been te you know, teammates. One time, I forget, it, might, it was probably 1977, Rodney's big year when he hit 388 and he could do just about anything he wanted to. And, and uh, you know, Mock, the little general, is the manager, and he, he called all the shots, right? I mean, he, there wasn't anybody other than Gene managing the game. And Rodney came up to me before the game. I was hitting second, he was hitting third. And he said, Now, if you get on first base, and I, uh, and I tap my, and I look down at you, and I tap my, my spikes with my bat, take off on the next pitch, we'll just do a little hit and run. I'm going, Oh man, this is not Mock calling it. <laughs> what I, and I didn't want to tattle on Rodney. I mean, this is Rod Carew, right? I didn't want to go to Gene and say, "Is it okay?" I mean, Rodney said, "Is that okay?" So I'm on first base and I'm <laughs> kind of hoping he doesn't do it. And he reached down and he tapped his spikes. I said, "Okay, I'm going." And of course, he hit a single or a double or something. And I went to third or home or whatever it was. When I came in the dugout, Mock says to me, "He came right up to me." Because he hadn't called that for right. me to take off, and I was not a base. I, I did not have the green light. <laughs> and he came up to me and said, "Did Rodney put that on?" And I said, "Yeah, he did." He looked at me and he said, "He turned around and said, okay, that's fine." <laughs> Ground ball single up the middle for Ford, and then I'll bring up Matt Duffy. And now from a word from 
Tria Health Partners. Well, not so much a word, I guess lyrics from Tria. Matt Duffy, the batter. Angel's got a run in the second on a solo home run. A leadoff walk in the third came around to score to make it a 2 1 ball game. Swing and a miss. Well, you were talking about Varlin, you know, facing Trout and Otani and faced Judge a couple of times in New York and then he was in Cleveland. He faced Jose Ramirez. So Judge, Otani, Ramirez may finish 1 2 3 in the MVP voting. Trout's won it what three times been a runner up three more times. So the rest of this ought to be a piece of cake. Right after facing those guys in your first three starts. Yeah I think he's pretty much over it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the. Uh, the starstruck guy if there was ever any that's probably it's probably gone now he looks like he knows what he's what he's trying to do and for the most part he's doing it. Speaking of hit and running looked like Ford took off there and. Ball tap fouled by Duffy. Yeah, as you look at Ford Trout back to the back, that was like, like, kind of like me. Not the same size, but about, you know, no, no speed demon when Rodney told me to take off. That caused me a lot of stress. <laughs> One and two. And no foul the other way. Next start figures to be against the White Sox. He'll probably face Jose Abreu in that one. Maybe later on, Miguel Cabrera. Big difference between Triple A hitters and big. <laughs> one and two. And that skips by Gordon. He hit it maybe right off the end of the bat, not hit hard, but a couple of singles here with one out in the fourth, and the Angels are threatening again. I'm not going to tell you that the rain is all but stopped because every time I do that, it picks up again. <laughs> Little uh, slider that uh, again hung over the middle of the plate. And Duffy didn't hit it hard, didn't hit it on the sweet spot at all, but hit it in the right spot, not the sweet spot, but the right spot. Big pop up. Sanchez has another chance here. Out number two. And now Max Stassi. Stassi drew the leadoff walk. It came after Sanchez. Failed to catch a foul pop, and after Hunter Wendelstead failed to call a two strike pitch down on the corner of the strike zone, a strike. That's a tough run to give up when the umpire costs you one, and then your catcher doesn't catch a, a, a pop fly that you figure you're uh, you're going to get an out on. And that run eventually scores. That's that was a little hard to swallow. Your Barlett. Sixty four pitches for Barlin, forty one strikes, a strike percentage of sixty four, which is very solid. Tapper to third, and Urshela will go to the bag, and the Angels leave two on in the fourth. Looking for dinner made easy? Move over meal prep and make way for pre-chopped and pre-portioned ingredients. Hit the road hard to follow recipes and say hello to easy breezy meals. Peace out pile of dishes and welcome easy cleanup. Well hello there home chef. Home chef oven ready meals. 
pre-chopped and pre-portioned recipes without the prep or mess. Get 16 free meals when you sign up at HomeChef.com. Home Chef, delicious meat simple. the Minnesota Lottery say I'm in and scan the QR code for a chance to join the Minnesota Lottery's winner circle and win $50 in scratch tickets. Some mound work being done as Otani throws off to the side of the mound with the rain coming down straight down pretty hard. So who's your vote. There are some great candidates out there. Judge I think is the favorite. You can't. I mean, Otani himself said he's playing better and pitching better than he did last year. And where would Cleveland be without Jose Ramirez? Yeah, it is just a wonderful year this year of great players doing great things. And uh, to answer your question directly, Aaron Judge is my MVP. And I understand it could be Otani. Here's the here's the issue that I have with Otani. Basically, the reason he would be the MVP is just because he's maybe the most special baseball player ever you know pitching and hitting nobody's ever done it uh, the way he's doing it but if that's the case I mean he could be the MVP every year just have average normal years for him and you just give him the MVP because he does he goes both ways you know he pitches and, right. and hits and, and I, I just think that you know he could be the MVP this year but for the year that Aaron Judge is having I mean if Aaron Judge ends up winning the Triple crown, or or not winning a triple crown because he lost the the batting title to Luis Arise by two points or whatever. I mean, what he's done for the Yankees all year long, and now down the stretch, and the note, the home runs he's put up, and the RBIs, and I mean, I, I just think it's the it's the most valuable player season. Urshela will lead things off in the Twins' four. Twins still don't have a hit. They've taken three walks and they've had a hit batter. And if this isn't fitting for how this team has struggled in the month of September, they scored their run on a double play. <laughs> Two and out. If you think, okay, Rod Carew hit 388, 1977, was the American League MVP for a team that won 84 ball games. Finished though 18 games behind the Kansas City Royals, but he did something, almost did something historic. I mean, hitting 388 in that season was almost in terms of what Judge is doing in the home run race. Right. I mean, right. it wasn't well, anybody exactly, close. It's exactly right. And when you look at, you look at the just the list of the names of people that have won a triple crown in, in either league. It's Rogers Hornsby and Chuck Klein and uh, Yastrzemski and Frank Robinson and you know I mean it's a very very select group. Well, there's a four pitch walk to start the fourth inning. Otani is the uh, Otani is a select group of one doing right. what, you know what he's doing obviously. Well Katie you've got some thoughts or collected some thoughts about who the clubhouse thinks should be the American League MVP. Yeah, that question was tossed around a lot before the game and it was tossed to Carlos Correa. He said he's a big numbers guy. So yeah, with what Aaron Judge has done right now, even with his war right now, he said that's been impressive. He's just doing these 
things at the plate when the pitching is the best it's ever been. So there's that, but also with what Otani is doing, it can't be overlooked. He said because it's something that nobody in baseball right now can do. He said the biggest, uh, most impressive thing about Otani is that he stays healthy going out there while pitching and hitting every day. He said as far as that MVP pick, he's not going to give it out yet, but he's a big fan of Otani and has a lot of admiration and respect for him. Yeah, I, I thought that was a really good answer, Katie, that he gave because he and Rocco Baldelli said the same thing when he was asked. We've got a couple weeks left, and if you've got two, three really strong candidates, let's let it play out. Right, absolutely. One and oh not a K, five straight misfires for Otani. Tap foul. I would just say this. Ed. As great a, a, a player as a, a, and as unique a player as Otani is, and, and I'll, I will say it again. I said it in the pregame show, and I've said it here. When, when you look at his ability to pitch and his ability to hit, he does baseball better than anybody else in the, in the game. I don't think there's any question. But when it comes to the most valuable player, if Aaron Judge were to win the Triple Crown, for example, out on, and lead his team to the division title. I mean that's that you can't not give him the MVP in my mind. Right. You just can't not do that. And as uh, implausible as it sounds, if it were not for Judge, the Yankees would not have clinched a playoff spot. Now they may not have made it altogether. They may not have made it altogether. Everybody else in that lineup was struggling for a month and a half. Yeah, he's carried he's carried the club, he carried the club while everybody was struggling, and now he's just turned it up a notch here down the stretch as well. So. It's been remark a remarkable performance. One and two to Cave and a swing and a miss. Tani with a strikeout, one down. Cave, I believe, should have gotten credit for an RBI in his first inning at bat because it was not a double force double play. And I, I, if they have not, the official scorer has not given him a run batted in, but I believe he would get credit for that, much like. Well, it's very similar to the play we had in Kansas City the other night. See the Yankees since the All-Star break are below 500, and the Angels playing a little bit better baseball now. Here's Sanchez. It, were it not for Judge, the Yankees would not have won those 27 games that they won. I mean, right. I understand that they I mean, he can't. He can't slug them to a 600 winning percentage. I mean, if he's the only guy hit, I mean, he can't. It's physically impossible to do that. But I think you talked to any of the Yankee uh, personnel, any of the players, manager, they know what he did, what he's done. Earlier, we gave you Barlin's strike percentage. With that strike, Otani's at 50. 52 pitches. On the scoreboard here, 53 we're giving you, but 26 strikes. Yet he has not given up a hit and has a two to one lead. Two and one. Twins have hit one ball hard. Gordon hit a line out. To Mike Trout to end the third inning. That cave hit his ball reasonably hard on that uh, on what turned out yep, to be a double yep. play. Foul back two and two. And Gary Sanchez got his pitch ready. He got a pitch. To do some damage with, especially against a uh, pitcher with Otani's kind of stuff. He got a little hanging breaking ball. It, it, actually, it had some pretty decent movement. It just kind of stayed right, right in the middle of the plate, and he just didn't quite get to it. And then big follow through, Ooh. smacked Stassi in the mask. Is okay. Well, the hope was the second time through the order, the Twins might have a little better success against Otani. Two and two. And Hunter Wendell's dead. Brings him up. Two down. 
with just one other start against the Twins. The Twins don't have the breaking yeah, ball. See the, the inside breaking ball that never got back to the plate. And yeah, Gary's saying I, it's so frustrating because you know that ball's inside. You got a really good look at it. You're looking at the umpire who's sitting right over catcher's shoulder next to you and thinking, how do, how do you how do you call that a strike? Here's Walner drew a walk his first time up against Otani. Dug out by Stassi. The that entire the entire Twins roster had nine at bats against Otani. Seven of those by Correa, who wasn't in the starting lineup, just one for seven. Two by Billy Hamilton, and neither one was in the starting lineup. So all these guys, and of course you'd expect that from Walner, Miranda, guys like that. But there wasn't one player in the starting lineup who'd ever faced this guy. One and one. Now well, we got to number six there, I think. <laughs> That's a lot of shaking. Well, and they are not using the pitch comp technology. You see the fingers down and the shake offs by Otani. Strike out of Sanchez, by the way, the 200th this year for Otani. 97 at the knees. Yeah, there's the, there was the sinker that he's trying that he's quote experimenting with. Sinker at 97. 97 with with some pretty good run. One and two to Matt Walner. Two and two. Walner was getting his hits on the road trip and then said, you know, he'd really like to get his a walk or two, and he's now gotten a couple of walks. First player in Major League history with 200 plus pitching strikeouts and eight or more home runs. Toyota Key stat. Two two to Walner. And now he's got another three ball count. Oh, that's a really good take by the young hitter. Otani, we've has that good slider. He's been throwing it a lot. For a left hand hitter after seeing that fastball, to, for that ball to come up there like that and, and, and dip below the strike zone, that's a swing and miss by a lot of left hand hitters, especially young left hand hitters. That's a nice take. That's the kind of action that I've seen with Walter that, that impressed me more than the hits. Just some of some of those kinds of more real professional professional things. And 99 down and away gets a call third strike <laughs> and we head to the fifth. And Walter looking at it right. 99 on the absolute corner. That's pretty professional too. The search for high quality meat ends here with butcher box you get 100 percent grass-fed beef organic free-range chicken humanely raised pork wild-caught seafood and so much more source from partners who believe in doing things the right way together we can make a difference one meal at a time sign up today at butcherbox.com for a special offer Nice. What? With the Game Time app, I pay 60% less than this guy. 60%? Game Time finds you the best last minute deals and guarantees the lowest price. Download Game Time now. Nice shirt. Want more hits? Train and win reality. Improve timing, pitch recognition, attack rate, and get more hits. Hitters love it, but pitchers. I'm glad I'm retired. Be ready for real. Win reality.
did. Let's get you caught up. Brought to you by Window Concepts of Minnesota. Jake Cave started the scoring for the Twins in the first inning. He grounds into a double play, but Miranda reaches home. one nothing early. Top of two now. Taylor Ward goes deep to left center field off of a cutter from Louis Varlin. That one traveled 418 feet. Ward's 20th homer of the year ties up at one. And later on, Mike Trout, he gets the go-ahead run for the Halos there with that RBI single. His third RBI in his last two games. 2-1 Angels there, and they continue to lead as we head into the fifth inning. Dick and Roy. All right. Trout's RBI single, the difference in this game. Louis Varland's done okay, although he's given up five hits. He'll face Levon Soto, Luis Rangifo, and Mike Trout here in the fifth inning. I think he's pitched very, very well. By all rights, it should be a one to one ball game. Second run he gave up was, as I mentioned earlier, just. Uh, Felt like he he had the hitter out twice, didn't happen, and that hitter eventually scored. But he's pitched very well. He pitched 126 in the third innings in the minor leagues this year, and might end up with 25, something like that, in the big leagues. So in the neighborhood of 150 innings pitched this year and pretty much everything that the Twins are doing now is with an eye toward 2023 the ball left field corner Jake came hustling after it a dive and he couldn't get there and the ball bounced into the seats for a double good effort by Jake cave. I don't know how many times we've said that already this year whether it's <laughs> hustling down the line trying to beat out a ground ball or diving for a ball in the corner. He plays it all out. You got to, you, you have got to recognize that, and acknowledge that. But Jake Cave, he's, he is going to give you that kind of effort every time he's out there. Inches away from a catch. Lead off double, and the leadoff man have given Varland some issues here. The home run by Ward, the walk, and now a double. He'll try to pitch around. One strike to Luis Rangifo. Sixteen and a third innings in the big league so far for Varlin. Hi, pop up and Urshela. One away. And that'll bring up Trout. It will be another postseason without Mike Trout. And the Angels, one of the huge disappointments in baseball again this year, if you were going to rank disappointing teams in the American League only, I'm not sure who'd be at the top of the list. The Angels or the White Sox. Yeah, I'd say that's I, I, I'd agree with that assessment. Missing up and in. Of course, you know, no red dome. I mean, they, they did a lot of things that they uh, spent a lot of money to get players that just have gotten hurt and not been able to produce. But you see, the Angels. Down near the bottom of the winning percentage around the league. And that's that's pretty disappointing with it. Having Trout and Otani on one team and, and not being any better than that. And the White Sox, I'm more disappointed in the White Sox. I, you know, frankly, I, I, I think they're a bigger disappointment. I, with that talent they have on, on, in all phases of the game, I mean, they can hit, they can hit with power, they can run, they can pitch, they can starting pitch, and they can relief pitch. And they haven't, they just haven't done it. They haven't lived up to it. I don't think. Many people outside of Anaheim thought that the Angels had any chance. Snapped his bat. The runner will advance. Trump retired two down. And Soto took a bit of a gamble there, but maybe he sensed the ball was hit very slowly. Two down now, a runner at third. School's back in session. 
And the student discounts better than ever. All students can purchase five dollar ballpark access tickets to all remaining home games plus a free Metro Transit ride. You can learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash student. I don't think anybody realistically thought the Angels had a chance to beat out Houston in the American League West. But the White Sox were heavy favorites to win the American League Central. And they may finish in second place. They may finish in third place. They may not finish with a 500 record. Want to know to Otani. Two ground ball outs so far for Otani against Varlin. And there's a strike call. One and one. It's been an interesting strike zone so far for Hunter Wendelstein. Ninety six of the knee. Yeah, with movement. That's uh, and one thing that Varlin. Another thing, not one thing. Another thing that Varlin's showing is ability to pitch to the low uh, extreme of the strike zone and and the upper register as well. Almost good got try. him to bite on the breaking yeah, ball. Good, really good try there. After that running fastball going the other direction. But you don't see a young guy able to command the fastball to that both high in the strike zone and low with effectiveness too often. Popped up short left. Cave coming in. That closes it out. Angels waste the lead on double. It's still two to one. Hey kids, join MLB Network and your favorite players for a show made just for you. Play ball. It's all the big moments, bat flips, and amazing plays from an exciting week of baseball and tips to up your game. Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network. Chase coverage than anyone. So all you gotta do, boom, is watch. Catch the pen and chase every night on MLB Network. Brought to you by Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the Twin Cities. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Lightly raining here at Target Field. The Angels in front, two to one. Time for the Health Partner Sports Update. Aaron Judge, a single. In four trips, his average now at 315. What's your thought about or thoughts about Judge pursuing, passing Roger Maris, born in Hibbing, Minnesota, grew up in Fargo? Well, I have a real, I have a real, uh, what do you call it, soft spot. I, I, I admire Roger uh, so much, and, and it really was a, a great record. That uh, that he that he owns in uh, in New York. He took so much grief and 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 just not deserved at all. And he had to play through you know death death threats and hate and all that kind of stuff. And and what he did that season through all of that was one of the great 
I think, great performances of baseball history. So I, I really think that if, if Aaron Judge were to were to pass Roger on that, I, I, the way I would look at it is that a, a great a, a great young player just paid real honor to a a, a great a great player in, in uh, Yankee and baseball history in Roger Maris. I think I think it will bring back it, it will bring back what Roger what Roger did. The Maris family in New York to witness whatever's going to happen as they were when McGuire and the National League side threatened and then eventually passed the major league mark. One and one to Contreras and Palacios on a rise. Another city in the country, by the way, 16,000 or so live in Hibbing. That's had a greater influence in the entertainment industry <laughs> than Hibbing. <laughs> My goodness. Probably not. Bob Dylan, Kevin McHale, Roger Maris born there. Contreras is trying to walk it off. Tani has three strikeouts in a row. So you see that and you and okay Otani's a hitter too and he's probably fouled balls off his feet ankles been hit by pitches he's a left handed batter and a right handed thrower so his pitching arm is exposed in every at bat but yet as Carlos Correa said he's so durable he, he, it runs like the wind. Yeah, there I, isn't anything he can't do. Yeah, I, I thought that was a great point that uh, that Carlos made. That the guy going out there every day and every fifth day, he's he's on the mound throwing a hundred whatever pitches. And Contreras is the fourth straight strikeout victim for Shohei Otani. Going to bring up Jermaine Palacios. Palacios went down swinging his first time up. Twins still don't have a head, but Otani's pitch count, one would think, would preclude him from going the distance. But the Angels are out of the race, too. Phil Nevin may give him a little slack in that regard. Outside ball one. Again, with 68 pitches and only half of them strikes. Would not bode well for a complete game, much less a no hitter. One and one. One and one. Those figures why not? Guy's tough to hit. Third baseman's playing back. Yeah, just didn't get the pitch to do it on. And, and you know, talk, we talked about this an awful lot. But another, another one of the many things I learned from Rod Carew, who was, you know, the best bunter I ever saw. Rodney bunted like it was three and one, like it, like he was looking for uh, to hit on three and one. He got a ball that he could bunt, or he took it. They, he wanted the exact pitch he wanted to bunt. That's where a lot of guys make a mistake and try to bunt pitches that are really hard to hard to do. Not two and two. Kind of like swinging at a tough, nasty slider three and one. But you know that's not the pitch you're looking for to, to hit one out of the ballpark. And the same way with bunting, you got to get a good ball to bunt, or you're you're going to be unsuccessful. Strikeout. Two down here in the fifth. Well, he's found the slider. The slider he didn't have for the first two innings. He's he's found it now. Two down and now a rise. 
judges at 315. Inside a ball. Bogarts in between. <laughs> Arise. Skip rope to avoid the pitch, and then the carom from the backstop got him. Yeah, here's a uh, down and in slider to kind of get his feet out of the way, and up oh, here it comes back at you. They don't award you first base when that happens, though. So. Two and zero. Oh. And there's a base hit for a rise, slapping a solid ground ball between Duffy and the line. That's the best swing uh, Rise has had in a while. It, that uh, he was on top of that ball very well, and stayed stayed very level. Used his hands. So he broke he up does. Dylan Cease's no hitter in the ninth inning a couple weeks ago, and now Otani's no hit bit broken up in the fifth. Stayed level, sh short to the ball. You know, much more, and you can see how he uses his legs. That's what we were talking about that as well. He wants to let the ball travel a lot, and then and then really drive his legs at it. That's the way he catches up with the ball, with being able to watch the ball travel so so far, and then still get the big end of the bat to it. Here's Miranda. Ninety nine at the knees. An extraordinary talent in Japan. The Angels got him, and the other twenty nine were trying. <laughs> yeah. When he pitched against the Twins in 2018, there was not a thing called the Otani rule. When I filled out my lineup sheet today, Otani is listed as the designated hitter, which means if he were to be taken out after the sixth inning, let's say, he would stay in the game as a hitter, unless the Angels chose to replace him, of course. What's interesting is we're starting to see the low levels of organized baseball more and more two way players. Now, will they be able to succeed like he can? Probably not. Guy's a unicorn, right? Yes. Nobody else can do what he has already done. One and two to Miranda. Got a piece, but baseball is seeing some players how well they'll be able to progress as two way players remains to be seen. But he's kind of broken the ice for some people who are going to at least give it give it a try. Yeah, I'd love to see more more and more players try to do that. It's fun to it's fun to watch this kind of this kind of talent. And Jacks, Trevor McGill getting loose. Marlon smiling with Pete Mackey. It might be that his night is done after five innings. Bouncer to short. And that ends the inning. Five complete for Otani. Gave up a base hit, but the Angels still lead two to one.
Every time he takes the field, he competes not only against the other team, but against the toughest adversary, himself. MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network. Cast powered by Google Cloud, leadoff home run by Taylor Ward. You could argue is the only mistake he made. Pretty much the only mistake. That was just a cutter right in the middle of the plate. And other than that, he's been he stayed out of the middle of the plate very well. And now Ward leading off the six, then a two to one ball game. Ball one. Stairs two and up. In our pregame show, Tim Lauder had his three keys for what Louis Varlin had to do. He said, continue, keep your rhythm going, that rhythm of getting the ball and throwing it, working fast. He's done that. Stay out of the middle of the plate. He's done a good job of that. And, and stay within yourself. And I think he's done exactly that. And I think Timmy was right on. You brought up a good point, though, too. I mean, with his fastball, he's got the strikes down at the knees of yep. the letters, moving the ball around. and. Now three and one. One leadoff walk, and it was a yeah, okay. Stassi walk, but a two out single by Trout brought him in for the go ahead run. Three and two. This is what we'll see next year in terms of tempo. And there'll be some awkward moments for the Verlanders of the world and people who've pitched without a clock for 20 some years, followed back. Well, let me tell you, there's going to be some. There will be some hitters that have their head spinning and <laughs> trying to figure out their plan, and not with a pitcher coming in 15 seconds and and they've not been able to figure out what they're what they're trying to do up there. It's going to be the adjustments for both pitchers and hitters. And I'm not sure that I think I don't. I think it's probably good adjustments that everybody's going to have to make. It's a good thing for. For the game. Hit hard to center field. And Contreras going back, looking up, and it's gone. A home run. Ward with another solo home run. Just driving it into the notch above the 403 sign, and it's three to one. Well, he's been hot lately, been swinging the bat very well, driving in runs, hitting the ball out of the ballpark, and he's turned around a couple of night. We talked about staying out of the middle, and I think he wanted that a little bit higher than it was. It's over two feet. It's a double. Out of right field. Walner's there, one away. Duffy the batter singled his last time up. So if he gets the next two batters it'll be a quality start. For Varland. Trout and Otani a combined one for six. And on a cold winter's day in January. Getting ready for the start. Of his. 2023 season. Farland will look back at this night with very fond memories. Deep 
to left center. Cave is there, and that's out number two. A word now from Explore Minnesota. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Those aren't boos you're hearing, they're loos. And a nice touch, I think, by Rocco Baldelli. No reason he couldn't have completed six innings. But in front of fans, friends, family, Louis Varlin gets a nice round of applause. A brief moment was all Roberto Clemente ever needed. He displayed incredible talent as a World Series champion, MVP, and 15-time All-Star. He fought injustice and helped those in need throughout his life of service. And he inspired generations of players and fans over the past 50 years to make a difference in their communities. Roberto Clemente changed baseball forever, ensuring his brief moment remains eternal. Some of us are looking already ahead to a next year in the 2023 season. Ticket plans are available now. Choose the popular flex plan or enjoy the same great seats every game in a variety of plan sizes and seat locations. All plans include a food and beverage discount. Visit twinsbaseball.com slash season tickets or text plans to 51655 and learn more. Bit of a smile. Why not? He did a nice job again tonight. He pitched very, very well, and, and you know, you talked about how he's going to feel about this start in January, and, and I, th I think he just looks like he's with every pitch and every outing, he's he's learning something. This, these are these are really important innings for him. He's got a chance to pitch in the big leagues. I think he's shown he's shown that, and he's going to learn from each one of these uh, each one of these times that he he faces. Ward or Trout or Otani or Judge. I mean, so we look at Trevor McGill getting ready to get try to get the last out of this sixth inning, get his boys up there swinging the bats. And he'll face Moniak, who struck out and fouled out in his first two at bats. So, not a quality start because Varlin didn't complete six innings. And I'm guessing that if this start was on the road, he would have been given that opportunity. But a nice touch having the homeboy come off the mound in front of so many friends and family, former teammates, all of that. And he got a nice ovation. Yeah, it's very nice. There was no reason for him to, to get a quality start. It's not going to make any, any difference. Laying out Palacios. Over to Miranda. That wraps up the sixth inning. Another Ward home run, and it's 3 1 Angels. If you think they're excited, you ain't heard nothing yet. Be quiet, win ball games, then I'll shut up. High Heat with Christopher Russo, only on MLB Network. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Jackie Robinson, 13 home runs into the left field stand. Here comes Roger Maris. Oh! There's a new home run 
champion of all time. I don't believe what I just saw. Calvert Jr. has reached the unreachable star. This crowd on its feet and in unison. This one has a chance. Home run. Mike Piazza. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. Welcome to the first night of MLB Network. Number 600 for Jim Tom. <laughs> That would be a new record. It is caught! Oh, what a catch by Mike Trout. The Cubs have finally won it all. The Atlanta Braves are world champions. generational talent like Tony uh, I guess you can say it never gets old presented by Old National Bank unless you're holding a bat <laughs> went through a streak with struck out five guys in a row using all that arsenal that he's got curveballs 99 mile an hour fastball on the black sliders a little bit of everything and just overmatching the twins hitters Leading now by two, the only hit of Luis R.I.'s single with two outs in the fifth. And 80 pitches, so one would think he might get the sixth inning. And then the Twins might be facing the Angel bullpen after that. Nick Gordon hit by a pitch in the first, lined out in the third. That's the slowest pitch he's thrown all night, I think. Well, that's that may be something uh, new that he decided to try on the uh, on the fly here. We <laughs> were told he tends to do that. He he's like a he's like a guy that just goes out in a wiffle ball game in the backyard with his buddies and making up uh, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. I mean, that was a 72 mile an hour curveball. That's six or seven miles slower than the than his average for the curveball. Foul ball just missed the bag and missed it on the foul side. So who knows when he if he's ever practiced this or or not but all of a sudden it was just a change up curveball. Gordon's looking at him and go okay I've, I've watched all the video I've seen all the stat cast that pitch was never in anything that I saw. It's like he's out there going I wonder what would happen if I gripped it like this and threw it like <laughs> well this. exactly. That's <laughs> Two strikes to Gordon. And he shoots one the other way, a base hit. Good and for the Nick Twins Gordon. get their leadoff man out on the six. Yeah, good for Nick Gordon. He continues to impress at the plate. He, and, and what I like about what Nick has done this year is he's. This is the way he used to hit a lot of the time. Try to let the ball travel. And, this is but now that's his two strike approach before he's got two strikes he's up there trying to hit the ball a long way to his book to his pull fielder he just hit the ball out of the ballpark hit it hard but then he changes with two strikes and you'll see him shoot the ball to left field and he did it there against Otani he's done it against left handed pitchers that's that's pretty good stuff there I, I really like when when hitters can have two plans like that a pre two strike and a two strike approach. Boy, the Twins were given a clinic on that against the Guardians, against the Astros, against the Dodgers, and teams that have really good lineups. Yeah, those those teams, those kind of hitters, they just don't give away at bats. They don't. They get to two strikes and just and have it just be auto, automatic because they're still trying to do the same thing with two strikes that they were uh, trying to do before they got two strikes. They just battle like crazy. And, and Nick Gordon has come a long way both in his ability to catch up with fastballs and pull up with authority and also then go back to his I'm going to watch the ball a long time and shoot the ball the other way if I have to with two strikes. 
One and one. Another check. Two and one. might not care anymore but Guardians are winning again looks like they're on their way to their fifth straight win here's the other one here's the other pitch he made up watch this ball run in hard at 95 miles an hour and that's it according to the Angels folks Mark Gubaza he's told me he's just all of a sudden he's decided to throw a sinker and watch this ball run and it sure does do it too. Three and two, cave on deck. Lead off man on for the Twins for the second time. Urshela drew a walk leading off the fourth. Number 89 for Otani. 46 strikes out of 88 so far. And there's a walk. The Twins have taken now five walks against Otani. Bring up Cave with two men aboard, but first a quick word from Great Clips. Good is getting it right. Great is doing it every time with clip notes. Great clips. It's going to be great. Well, as you mentioned, only one out of two approximately uh, of Tony's pitches are, are for strikes, but the ones he does throw for strikes, they're pretty nasty. Tony's walked Urshela three times tonight. Came over two. Low ball one. Beginning of activity in the Angel bullpen. And a walk to the mound by Stassi. Veteran Aaron Loop getting loose. And as the Angels contemplate a bullpen move, the Twins have five bench players, which are Sandy Leone, Billy Hamilton, Caleb Hamilton, Carlos Correa, and Alberto Celestino. One and oh to Cave. And now one and one. Season high five walks issued by Otani. See if Jake can lay off those sliders out of the strike zone and get himself into the middle. One clips the outside edge. Yeah, one and two. And all of a sudden. He after throwing those down and in sliders, the left handers, then all of a sudden he throws one out on the back door side.
One and two to Cave. Nearly hit him. Well, clearly we are not seeing the best of Shohei Otani with the control issues that he's had. How did that not hit him in the back leg? So he's given up two hits, but five walks and a hit batter. Going to have the tying run at first. 2 2 to Cave. Headed up the middle and through. Gordon around third. He'll score. And Cave drives in. Gordon from second base. And it's three to two. Another good at bat by Jake Cave, and he did, in fact, was able to lay off, not swing at, not chase sliders, got something in the middle. Hit it right back and through the middle. The drive in a run. That's a nice at bat by Jake Cave. Two, two up tonight against Otani. Hit the ball hard with bases loaded for the one run that the Twins got earlier. Sanchez 0 for 2, a grounder to third, and a strikeout. I think he's going to throw Gary in one slider again in the middle of the plate. That's the one he's going to have to hit. That one off the plate, slower breaking. Yeah, that was the curve. Doesn't throw it a lot to right handers, but you never know. Not necessarily a fastball count, especially with Otani out there. He likes his slider, likes it and in all counts. One way or the other, if he throws two more pitches to Gary Sanchez, at least one of them will be a slider. That 
was a that was probably the cutter. It had it had it had slider type spin and movement. But yeah, 92. That that's a nasty pitch. Three and one. Tani still looking for his first out of the sixth inning. Oh, and it looked like Hunter Wendelstead was wow. about ready to ring him up. Right arm never came up, but he started to bend at the waist like it was going to come up, and instead it's a walk, and they're loaded up now. Watch where this pitch is. Oh, my. I think that was supposed to be a cutter also. Otani said, no, you can't you can't not call that a strike. So Otani asking where that pitch yeah. was. <laughs> He's he, asking if it was inside, knowing full well it was not inside. He wanted to hear him say it. Six walks and a one run lead, but the bases are loaded and nobody out. Branch, we don't make bedding like everyone else. We make it better. We prioritize thread quality, not thread count. We source the finest 100% organic cotton to make the softest, most luxurious fabrics on earth. We're free from toxins, the way home should be. Bolin Branch is made different, so you can sleep better at night. Experience the difference at BolinBranch.com. We love going to games. The good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. It's cheating. It's not even fair. It's like the hitters know what I'm going to throw every time. I hate win reality. I love it. Be ready for real win reality. Distilleries and cideries are cropping up all over the state, and you're invited to come taste the delicious results. Whether you're looking to follow the Southern Minnesota Beer Trail or want to discover a new winery up north, let the Min Sips Passport give you inspiration to quench your thirst. Visit exploreminnesota.com slash Sips and cheers to a great weekend. Reigns uh, re-entered the... the a picture here at Target Field, but a big moment here now for Matt Walters as he'll face veteran Aaron Loop with the bases loaded and nobody out. You see Loop's numbers there. I'm really glad Rocco's left Walner in there to hit. As I mentioned uh, early in the game, I've, I felt like one of the best things that Walner that I've seen Walner do is hang in tough against left-handed pitching. So give the young man a chance. We look at. What loop features basically sinker cutter. We'll throw some other stuff, but he's going to. Up the line and trickling foul. That would have tied the game. As it is now, one strike. So loop is going to try to move the ball two different directions. He's going to put the left hander up there, that pitch right there, and he calls a sinker, and he tries to run the ball in on left handers and then throw the cutter that will break the other direction. Runs it hard in on him. Landed in foul territory, then went fair for a moment, then went back foul. Down the line. But foul. And now 0 and 2 to Walner. Thank you. 
Got that sinker in on him again, sawed him off. Walner with 26 at bat. Nine strikeouts. Trying to get something done here and get a new bat, first of all. Get something done here, putting the ball in play to get this game tied up. Well, he seemed to two running fastballs in now he's going to be a bit vulnerable to the cutter he hasn't seen that loop will occasionally throw curveballs to a left hander but he's established inside with Walter let's see if if Walter can stay in the center of the field and not pull off and at the knees a ball third strike one away now another left handed batter Mark Contreras will be pinch hit for by Hilberto Celestino. <laughs> Celestino pinch hitting for Contreras who was 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Inside, nearly hit him. That's the pitch he calls a cutter. It's like a big slider. A high fly down the line. It's foul. And it's a 1 1 count. Play grounder. And Luke gets out of it. The Twins get one, but could have gotten so many more. Still trail by a run. To get more hits out here, start training in here. Introducing Win Reality. Game speed pitches anywhere, anytime. Hands in sync with eyes. Confidence in sync with your progress. Be ready for real win reality. Did you know the ticket prices can actually go down right before the game? That's where Game Time comes in. Game Time tracks ticket prices in real time from thousands of trusted sellers, then shows you all the best deals. So we can get tickets at the last minute for up to 60% off. Download Game Time now. Hi, we're Warby Parker, and we're all about making vision care convenient. That's why we developed the Virtual Vision Test app. Use it to renew your expired glasses or contacts prescription from home with your phone in about 10 minutes. If everything looks good, a doctor will renew your prescription for $15. It's as easy as reading the eye chart at a doctor's office. Except you're at home, on your phone, like you probably are right now. Download Virtual Vision Test today. Came in, faced two men, got three outs. Can't do any better than that. He's kept his team in front. 
Veterans and active military members can receive half price twins tickets. Simply provide a valid military ID and enjoy half price diamond box high or home plate view seats. Details at twinsbaseball.com slash military. So Lestino will stay in the game and play center field. McGill still on the mound. And he'll face Max Stassi, Levon Soto, and Luis Rengifo. The Twins have grounded into two double plays again tonight. And in each case, any chance for a big inning just got wiped off the boards. The Twins did get a run in their half of the sixth to draw within one. Gave with an RBI single, but now to the seventh, and Stassi will lead things off. Trevor McGill back out there. He of the 98, 99, sometimes 100 mile an hour fastball and curveball. He's working on a slider. He's throwing that more often now, which I think is a will be a good pitch for him. If he can on foul back. Command the command the slider trajectory. Again at 98, another swing and a miss. Four pitches, four strikes so far for Trevor McGill. That's the slider there. He spiked that one, but that's a after 98 miles an hour with fastballs to a right hand hitter that's a that slider can be at his put away pitch if he can get that see he'll just he'll overthrow that one but with two strikes if he can command that that'll be a put away pitch for him and now two and two Pete Mackey the pitching coach. Varlin, the starter, gave the Twins, got for the Twins, 17 outs. And now Miguel, who got ahead on two, runs the count full. A nice catch for the first down. Closing is the right word. I think you described it perfectly. He he does close very well on this ball. Gets gets right to it. Stays with it. Nice play. So one down on the seventh, and now Soto. In the dirt ball one. One and one. Got a night game tomorrow, but an hour earlier start, six o'clock on a day game Sunday. Twins have their last off day of the year on Monday. And the White Sox come to town for three. And they'll vacate the clubhouse, finish the season on the road. Three in Detroit, three in Chicago. And the leaves turn color, they fall from the trees, the snow falls, and we just hold our breath till opening day next year. God, I was in such a good mood. <laughs> hey, you must, if not like it, at least tolerate it. You're a Southern California kid, but you've been living here 
Not most of your life. Oh, yeah, right? I, I, I do tolerate it. As a matter of fact, I, I love the fall, especially. And this is feeling fall like. I'm kind of kind of ready. Three and one. And now ball four. And Soto, who has a couple of hits tonight, now issues or is issued a free pass. That'll bring up Ringifo. Ringifo for three. Angels had a chance maybe to break the game open a bit in the third inning. First and third, nobody out. And Regifo hit a, I won't even call it a line drive, just kind of a short pop up, softly hit right to Miranda, who stepped on the bag, and Miranda there does a nice job digging out a low pickoff throw. That was a nice play right there. It was a uh, now you're in a short hop, a little bit almost in between hop, and Miranda able to stay with it. So much tougher for right handed throwing first baseman with that glove on the left side. Everything's a backhand. In there for a strike. Side edge and it's 0 and 2. Be interested to see if, as McGill works on that slider, if he'll if he'll throw it at all to left-handers. He's been exclusively fastball, curveball to left-hand hitters. Here it is again, another curve. Do two. two. Seventeen pitches for McGill, only eight strikes. Yep, right there will uh, get most left hand hitters at 99. Trout with an RBI single in three trips. This is an interesting matchup right here. This is power and power. Hundred at the knees. Sanchez. Ward with a couple of solo home runs and Trout's RBI single in the third. That's been it. If he could bottle that, that that's you know? the slider there. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the, is the put away pitch right there. And what that does, throwing it right there, that takes that adds a little steam to the fastball. Now, if he wants to throw that, Trout doesn't know what's coming. A hundred or that slider. That's that's took uh, the slider that time. Yeah. 
just not quite close enough, but he's got the right idea. And I still think that he's that he can throw a high fastball. I think he's he's back trout off the fastball enough with that slider. He can go either way here, but it's got to be it's got to be up in the zone if he throws the fastball. 100 right down the middle. Yeah. And he got a piece of it. And he beat him. He beat him with it. He trout was late. That's the thing about about Trout though is that he's another guy with two strikes. He's not he's not necessarily thinking hitting the ball long to left field. He's he's in the center of the diamond. It's a lot of balls to right center. He's got power to all fields. So with two strikes, he's he's not afraid to watch the ball a little longer. Another two two coming. Angels not hitting the twins. Seven to three. Jimmy Hergut getting loose. Another one in the dirt blocked by Sanchez. That's what the Twins would like to see more of from Sanchez. Just block it instead of reaching for it. It's a foul ball by about a foot. Reaching for it with the catcher's mitt. We saw on the road a couple of times where the ball. I mean, it, it's difficult to do, or else you shortstop would be going going out to shortstop with a catcher's mitt, <laughs> right? Trying to backhand a ball in the dirt. But yeah. that time, a couple of times here in this at bat, he's. Just gone over and right and blocked it. Yep, and that's exactly the way it, it, it should be done. He got a little bit of a uh, that was kind of the reputation he got when in New York, where he was a little bit uh, a little bit too much trying to catch the ball rather than block it. I thought he'd been doing it really well with that most of the year. Runner goes another foul. But when, what we just saw, I mean, the, the, the people who like the knee in the ground position for a catcher, they can be mobile out of that position. And we've seen Sanchez a couple of times in this at bat do that. It's more difficult to be mobile out of that position, but uh, I think catchers are learning how to do it. Another 3 2 coming. There goes the knee, and there's ball four. He struggled for that walk. He got it. Two walks in the inning, and now Otani with Rocco Baldelli coming out to the mound, and he's going to make a change with Theobar getting loose in the Twins' pen. Miguel running into some control issues here, a couple of walks. So there are two men aboard with two out, and Caleb Theobar will try to get Shohei Otani. Every time he steps up to the plate, oh goes into his windup, or runs one down, he, oh, you won't see a better one than that. he competes not only against the other team, but against the toughest adversary, himself. MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network. Baseball's biggest moments are live on MLB Big Inning. MLB.tv's nightly show takes you from game to game for all the grand slams, no hitters, walk offs, and more as they happen. Wow, he can do it all! Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. This is some kind of awesome. After your game ends, the action's just heating up on MLB Big Inning every night on MLB.tv.
against Field Bar. The Twins are teaming up with Lumbier Mellon for a special night at Target Field coming up Tuesday. The White Sox are in town, and it's a special Love Your Melon Night ticket package, including a Twins themed beanie, stocking cap, made of soft cotton in St. Paul. Each ticket sold through this special ticket package supports Love Your Melon's program to give a hat to every child battling cancer in America. Get your ticket package at twinsbaseball.com slash love your melon. Giving away some stocking caps tonight. They've come in handy. It's kind of a cool, damp night. Been an interesting ball game. Twins playing from behind here. And Thielbar coming in to try to get Otani to keep this a one run game. So this is another good matchup. You see Thielbar's number is good against both right handers and left handers. 219. And now we see his, his pitch selection. Basically a four seam fastball and then a couple of speed and trajectory breaking balls. But Otani pretty good against left handed. Pitchers as well. So, and he's a good breaking ball hitter. So it, this is going to be a, a, a very, very tough matchup, I think, for uh, for Thielbar. Thielbar adding the slider, increased usage of it, the quicker breaking ball, but then that slow breaking ball as well. One strike to Otani. Fastball rocketed to center. Rounding third, Soto will score. And the Angels now lead by two. So a 4 2 ball game, and Ward coming up. He's already hit two home runs in the ball game. Our All State Mayhem moment. A home run to left and a home run to center. Yeah, the first one did. Uh, I think uh, Louis Varlin would be the first to say that was a mistake. Uh, a cutter in the middle of the plate. There's a pretty good fastball up in the zone that Ward, uh, who's been hot, he just was able to square up. In between the home runs, a strikeout. Twins couldn't take advantage, full advantage of the opportunity they created for themselves when Otani had some control issues. But now McGill running into some here in the seventh. Otani with the RBI single, and the lead is back to two. One and one. Fastball. Otani hit his. Ward missed that one. The one thing that Thielbar is able to do really well with that slow curveball is uh, get get guys just a little bit off the fastball. Tap foul. You see that practice swing from from Ward. That's a, uh, a, a kind of a uh, an image of how he wants to hit. He is a uh, extension oriented hitter. He get his arms extended, but he, he hits the ball all over the field. He does a pretty good job of, of being in the middle of the diamond with his swing. Checks there. Two and two from Thielbar. Ninety six, but missing down and away. In his five and two thirds innings, Varland walked just one man, but then McGill walked a couple in the seventh. And now it's a full count with runners at first and second. They'll take off here. And another one pulled foul.
See what Thielbar decides to go with here. Where it looks like he's on the on the breaking ball speed. What a catch by Urshela! A bullet headed from the left field corner. He timed his leap perfectly. And the inning comes to an end. Well, just athleticism right there. Evan Longoria, a guy last year who was one of the catalysts to a surprising Giants team. Meet Evan Longoria. This year as well. He's watching MLB Network. He's back, dude. Longo's hitting with big time power. Still that because that's what baseball fans do. Right, here we go, Longo, 2022. Covering the pennant chase? Serious business. Boys, get on my back. You got no respect for me. No. Believe in me, baby. I'm playing Tetris on my gun going cross side. It's no nonsense analysis straight from the source. Really good. Good. Knows I got live. donuts. This time of year, we bring our game faces to work. Whoa, coming at you. <laughs> when we're on that couch, we are locked in. Start flapping my arms. <laughs> Inside the locker room and off the field each week as Vikings players chat with Viking Entertainment Network's Gabe Henderson and Tatum Everett about more than just football. The Audible tonight after Twins Live postgame on Bally Sports North and the Bally Sports app. It's a 4 2 ball game. Loop did a fantastic job. Bases loaded, nobody out. One run ball game, and he got a strikeout. And a ground ball double play, and now he'll start the seventh inning. Palacios will lead things off. Palacios, then a rise, and Miranda. Outside, ball one. Just three hits for the Twins. One by Arise, one by Gordon, one by Cave. He nearly hit Celestino twice before getting him to ground into a double play, and he almost hit Palacios there. So you got to know with loop he's going to be cutting that ball in on you and then trying to run it the other way in the fastball you, you have to get a ball in the middle of the plate or take it here leading off the inning. Small chopper. Duffy plenty of time. Watch him retired one away. And it'll bring up a rise. One for three. On the night. Hitting at 313 which is where his average was. At the start of the game, Aaron Judge went one for four. He's at 3.50, so a hit here would, one would think, pull a rise into a tie with Judge. I'm looking at this from more of the big picture of the 11 games plus that the, that everybody has left, and thinking about who could get who could get hot and just win the batting title. Right. And I think Louis Luis Arise could do that. He, he, it's been it's been a while since since he's hit like we've seen him do so often. And if there's one more 11 game stretch left in him, he's the one I think can throw a number of hits together and, and as well or better than the other two guys he's he's challenging. 
and I don't know the numbers but I get the sense that he's much better as a first baseman or second baseman than he is as a designated hitter. He's DHing because of the hamstring. So it might be that central to his hopes of winning the batting title his ability to play in the field. It's going to hang in the air for Ward to away. And now Miranda will bat but he won't hit against Luke. Luke did his job. He didn't do any better than getting five outs from four batters. And Hergut will pitch next for the Angels. From inside jokes. Hey, look. It's Mike Napafanakis. To insiders' perspectives. I like over five and a half strikeouts on Walker Bueller. Your best bet is the pregame spread. Served up only on MLB Network. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Jackie Robinson searching home runs into the left field stand. Crowd on its feet and in unison. This one has a chance. Home run. Mike Piazza. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. Welcome to the first night of MLB Network. Number 600 for Jim Tony. <laughs> that ball is gone. 106. That would be a new record. It is gone. Oh, what a catch by Mike Trout. The Cubs have finally won it all. The Atlanta World Champions! It's 4 2 Angels. Hergut will come in to pitch to Miranda. Miranda with a walk and a run scored in the first, then a pop up to short and a ground ball to short. Really good numbers for Hergut. Yeah, he's particularly well. as of late. Yep, he's he's gotten hot. And he, striking out almost a batter per inning, not walking people. He's pitched well. Chop foul, one strike. And a strike taken, own two. You got it as a hitter. You have to contend with Hergut's delivery a little bit. He's, he's a, a little herky jerky, and he, he short arms the ball from the side. You don't see that very often. Hesitation. Yep. And now one and two. I would think picking up his hand right here is it would be a. A challenge and adjustment a hitter would have to make because you don't you don't see this kind of arm angle and, and delivery here. Breaking ball got him, and that wraps up a one two three seven. Every time he takes the field, he competes not only against the other team but against the toughest adversary, himself. 
MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network. Baseball's biggest moments are live on MLB Big Inning. MLB.tv's nightly show takes you from game to game for all the grand slams, no hitters, walk offs, and more as they happen. Wow, he can do it all! Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. This is some kind of awesome. After your game ends, the action's just heating up on MLB Big Inning. Every night on MLB.tv. Field magic yet in this final homestand of the year. Big night for Matt Walder and Louis Varlet, our Verizon player profile. Louis Varlet giving the Twins five and two thirds innings, could have gone six, but I think Rafael Baldelli wanted him to get an ovation coming off the mound. He did that. Walder drew a walk, a couple of strikeouts have followed, made a nice play in right field, but in each case, this is, I suspect, the first of many. Games here at Target Field for both those guys. Both of those guys showing big league potential for sure. This is an important time for guys like that for for young guys. And I I heard uh, Justin talking about it and and uh, it's it, it's really true that. You get young guys getting the opportunity in the big leagues. We look at Emilio Pagan, new Twins pitcher, and, and his arsenal this year. Young guys, this is this is more of a showcase than spring training is. And, and this hitting against big league pitchers, pitching against big league hitters. And it's more of a showcase now because teams are limited to 28 players. When in years past they might have 38 players. Right. Right. So in order to in order to have a chance in spring training next year, and this is uh, this is the time for young players to really show what, what what kind of potential they have, get a chance. Ford, the batter, one strike from Emilio Pagan, and there's strike two. Albert Pujols has just hit his 699th home run at Dodger Stadium. Good for him. Games in the third inning, he'll have maybe three more opportunities to hit number 700. It's been a storybook year for Pujols, particularly the second half. So sentimentally, wouldn't it be better if he did it in St. Louis? Yes. Still beloved in St. Louis. What a hitter he has been. One and two. Missing a little bit low, two and two. Boy, I just don't know how you lay off. The, you don't swing at that pitch. That's that's the uh, split finger that uh, Pagan is throwing, you know, more often now, and I really like it. But, and that's the perfect spot for him. Good speed. Good downward break, good location, and the hitter just didn't swing it. Well, we've had a lot of full counts today for both sides. Otani walks six. And you know, we're talking about you know rule changes and the pitch clock and guy and you know people you know getting sped up here, but 
I still maintain that one of the biggest problems for length of game in baseball is the number of three and two counts. The, just the sheer number of pitches that are thrown. There he pulled the string. And an off speed pitch gets a swinging strike three. Well, he threw some really great split fingers right there, about five of them in a row, and finally got one in the perfect spot and, and got for the chase. See it right there. One down and now Duffy. Duffy with a single and a couple of outfield flies. Check swing foul right over the left shoulder. I think of Tony Diaz standing next to Rocco Baldelli. Yep, there's Tony. That was close. <laughs> so, ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah. One strike to Duffy. Angels have had nine three ball counts. The Twins have had seven. This one looped to right. Waller hardly has to move. Two down. Now Mickey Moniak. Angels have been such a disappointment. We tend to forget they got off to a really good start. They like the Twins. At one point, 10 games over 500. We're 21 and 11 at one point in the middle part of May. Twins were 10 games up later in May. Then the bottom dropped out. They fired their manager. Change gets another swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Two strikes to Moniac. There are a number of teams, and the Angels are one of them, that might be sold soon. Orioles might be sold soon. Artie Moreno, the owner of the Angels, said he will explore a sale. One and two. High fly, center field. Retreating is Celestino now over. And nice inning for Pagan, a 1 2 3 8. game is changing and so are the shows that talk about it. MLB Network's Off Base. What's going on everyone? A modern baseball show for the modern baseball fan. It doesn't get much better than sitting around and talking baseball. Only on MLB Network.
first start against the Twins since 2018. Pitched seven strikeouts in five innings. He now has 203 punch outs on the season. He did allow a season high six walks. Now Louis Varlin made his first start here at Target Field. Three runs, seven hits through five and two thirds with three strikeouts. Did all he needed to do tonight though. Taylor Ward did get to him the top of the second. His first home run of the game. Uh, put the Angels up early. Taylor Ward then again his second home run of the night padded the lead. That one went over the center field wall making it 3-1 Angels. Cave put it within one. And Otani gave the Angels back that two run lead in the seventh and they continue to lead 4-2 to two here at the bottom of the eighth inning. Dick. All right. Hergut still out there. Nick Gordon leading off the eighth. And the home plate umpire. Hunter Wendell said, said he went on a check swing, one strike. Grounded to Rengifo, one away. Well, the Angel bullpen has done a really good job here. Facing less than the Minimum number of batters to get the outs that they've got. Well, Luke did a ter terrific job, as you said, of getting out of that bases loaded jam. And Hergen continues to pitch well. He's been hot coming into this series, and nobody's looked real comfortable against him yet. Breaking ball bends over the inside edge. Urshela faced Otani. Three times and walked three times. And now two strikes. This one hit pretty well. The right field retreating is Ward. Still on the grass, makes the catch. Out number two. That'll bring up Cave. The two twins runs both scored as the result of Cave at bat. He grounded into a double play in the first, and Miranda scored from third. And then he drove in a run with a single in the sixth. Yeah, he had two very nice at bats against Otani. Two of the only ones, really. On the outside edge, a strike. The Twins really. Looked pretty helpless against Otani uh, tonight, except for the walks that he gave them a chance and cave able to hit a couple of balls reasonably hard to get a couple runs in. Oh and two. Two strikes from Hergut. And over the tarp, which has blessedly been sitting there covered down the left field line all night long since they pulled it off to get the, the field ready for the game. We've had rain throughout, lightly now, I believe, but at times heavy, but some doubt as to whether we get the game in. But we have gotten it in to this point. Oh and two to cave. Up the middle and cave's got another knock. Two out single and that'll bring up Sanchez as the tying run. Very nice night for Jake Cave. 
expected to see him get some base hits. Two strikes, staying in the middle of the field, right back through the through the middle with that little sinking fastball. So if you're thinking home run, Perkins only given up four of them in 65 innings. That's pretty good. It's really good. I think he's going to flip that slider, but slurvy slider up there is to Sanchez. See if he can stumble into one of those. Get, get one in, kind of inside middle. Sanchez's last home run earlier this month at Yankee Stadium about three weeks ago. Sanchez. Three and oh and absolutely hit sign right here. Yeah. Absolute green light. If he walks, the twins do have Billy Hamilton on the bench. Might see a pinch runner with two down and Walner coming up. Three and oh from Hergut. Was going to first, but strike one is called. I still think he's going to get slider here from Hergen and see if he can get one in the middle. One through it, three and two. Cave will leave early now from first base. Full count to Sanchez. Twins down a pair in the eighth. Another breaking ball got him and came is left aboard and we head to the night. So all you gotta do, boom, is watch. Catch the pennant chase every night on MLB Network. Down a couple of runs. The MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit here to Target Field. You can buy and manage game tickets, unlock offers, access exclusive content, and much more. So download the MLB Ballpark app today. 
It'll be Max Stassi, Devon Soto, and Luis Ringifo facing Emilio Pagan in the ninth inning. White Sox lost again, their fourth straight loss. The Guardians are leading in the ninth inning in Texas. So the magic number for the Guardians might be clipped by two more tonight. You went through that about this time of the year in late September 87 at the Metrodome on a nightly basis. The Twins kept winning. Royals played pretty well that week, but the magic number seemed to go down by at least one every night. Hit a long way, but very foul. Yeah, it was uh, it was an awful lot of fun. It, it, the intensity of every game, you know, down the down the stretch. And that last series that we had against uh, Kansas City at home, we won a won a big game on Sunday, uh, which. Sent us to Texas. We needed one more win. We got we we got it the next night in Texas. But that was that was fun. Two strikes from Pagan, and there's strike three. One away. Reminisced about that Sunday game with former Kansas City manager John Wathan, who's a friend of mine. He stopped by the booth when we were at Kauffman Stadium the other day, and how loud it was, and the spontaneous ovation that the Twins got after. It was the last home game of the year. Tom Kelly brought the lineup card out, and as they left, the managers left the home plate area. Just scoreboard didn't tell them to do it, but the fans just really gave the Twins a roar. Who lost to the Royals Friday and Saturday night? Yeah, we desperately needed a uh, desperately needed a win, and in the uh, in the first inning. Al Newman playing second base made it his, his wonderful, wonderful double play. Looked like we were gonna we were gonna get behind again right away in the first inning. And Newman made this terrific, terrific play to get us out of the inning, and we ended up winning that game. Coming Still back. the only five-four-two double play. I'm gonna tell you, the runners on first and third, and and uh, a, a ground ball hit uh, to the left side of the infield. And, and the runner on third held up, and it looked and, and uh, looked like uh, we weren't going to get the runner at first base, and, there, and knew we had the presence of mind to get the out at second when it's balls thrown to him, and then make a perfect throw to the plate to get the runner who decided to go. I mean, it was just a, it, it was just unexpected. Everything, nothing about that play was expected, and it turned out so well for us. And, and I, it really catapulted. It turned the it turned the crowd on. It uh, it turned us on. It was that was great. Runner at third base, by the way, was Willie Wilson, one of the fastest runners yeah. in the American League. Yeah. Well, there again. I mean, unlikely. Are we ever going to throw Willie Wilson out of home plate when the first throw goes to second? Check swing. A breaking ball gets a swinging strike three and a good outing here for Pergon. Five up, five down. Then Al Newman almost hit a home run on the bottom of the first. He hit one off the plexiglass in left field. Kirby Puckett, Gary Gaetti, Ken Herbeck did hit home runs in that first inning, and that was pretty much all she wrote. That was it. Two down here in the Angel ninth inning, and that'll bring up Ringifo. Away, ball one. Down and away. News for the Seattle Mariners Julio Rodriguez put on the injured list today with some back issues and then the Mariners in Kansas City lost to the Royals five to one tonight. They're still in good shape but it 
with two weeks left. Yeah, it's he, not a foregone conclusion that the Mariners are going to get in. Is he, uh, did you say he's officially on the IL? Yep, they put him uh, on the 10 day IL. And he has been the catalyst for that team. Beat Houston. The Orioles still like to think they're a contender. Hey, two really good innings for Emilio Pagan. And we'll see if Matt Waller can start a ninth inning comeback. A new quest has begun. A quest for success. Wow! What a star by that one. A quest for redemption. My quest begins now. Unbelievable! All the way to October. Oh my goodness! Only on MLB Network. That's God! Struck him out! Our national pastime, all the time. Heading into the bottom of the ninth inning, I'm Marnie Gellner. Coming up right after the game, Tim Laudner will join me for Twins Live. We'll look at Shohei Otani and his five-plus innings tonight against the Twins, holding them to a couple of runs and just three hits. Plus, Louis Varlin made his home debut here at Target Field, five and two-thirds innings for Varlin. Some nice defensive plays made by the Twins tonight. We'll hear from the manager, Rocco Baldelli. All of that comes up after the final out is recorded tonight. Stick and Roy. Well, let's hope that it's not the final out that's recorded. Let's hope that the Twins score three and that there's a double, a home run, something that will turn this game back around. And if they're turn, going to turn around, they're going to do it against Ryan Tepra here for the uh, the new pitcher for the Twins. I mean, I'm sorry for the Angels against the Twins hitters. Three for eight in save situations. And he'll face Matt Waller, who'll try to get something started here. He has a walk and two strikeouts. Then Celestino and Palacios are due up next. And then a rise, who's one for four. A ball. Strike. That's about where Tepper is. 92, 93, four seam fastball there. He'll try to two seam run a two seamer also and then throw a slider, basically three pitches. Got it in. Slider. Well, my goodness gracious. Guess what just happened at Dodger Stadium? No way. Yes. Oh man. Albert Pujols hit number 700. That's awesome. Swung out and missed two and two. And as I've said a couple of times already, my goodness, we were in Anaheim. He hit number 600 against the Twins. Who would have thought at that, that there time? Were another 100 no way. runs left. At that time, when when he hit number 600, it was like there's. I mean, he might hit a few more, but not a hundred of them. And there's a called third strike. It is the third strikeout for Walner tonight. You know, one of the things I really like about 
this is Pujol said oh, you know if you hit 698 699 you'll come back next year and he said no no I this is it <laughs> 700 doesn't really mean that much to me that I would come back just to get it and then he ended up getting it you know it, I I understand it. this is going to be it and and whether it's 698 or 99 or 700 it doesn't really make a difference in that great career but to have 700 in that great career to have that number staring at everybody I think that's wonderful. No he did play briefly for the Dodgers this one dribbled up the line and that's going to be fun. He did play briefly for the Dodgers when the Angels cut him free. But yeah, can you imagine if it had happened in St. Louis? I'm curious. I have not seen the home run. I'm curious where it was hit. If it was hit into a bullpen, I hope. Yeah. So much concern about the safety of the fan who ends up with Aaron Judge's 61st, 62nd, whatever. One and one. Can you imagine the the adulation, adulation that's going to be heaped on Pujols when he gets back to St. Louis? Wonderful. Half swing, but he went. And that's one and two. And the Cardinals pretty much in control of the National League Central. They'll be. A postseason with Albert Pujols in it. It's it's just storybook, isn't it? Two and two. How he's going to go out and you know hit, get to 700 home runs and get them hit. Well, first of all, he acquitted himself very well in the All Star Home Run Derby. Yeah. Then he hits his 700th home run and probably will hit a couple more, and then he's going to be in the postseason. I mean, it, it couldn't get any better. Two and two to Celestino bounced into a double play in a pinch hitting appearance in the sixth inning. Three and two. Another three ball count. Not an abundance of runs or hits six runs dozen hits but a ball game that's going to end up about three and a half hours old because of the walks and the deep counts and Celestino with a single right and Palacios do up. To the plate representing the tying run. Well, what Celestino does best, he hit the ball in the opposite field. So good job by Celestino. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent. So the Twins LLC. Good job by Celestino getting something started here for the Twins. One strike to Palacios. The only power on the Twins bench would be that of Correa. And it's clear that he was given tonight off and for it to be a night off. Palacio's trying to get a board here. He's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Well, let's just let's get Luis a rise up here next and see what happens. And he's gone on three pitches, and that'll bring up a rise. 
One thing that Rocco Baldelli said today that I think was a nice reminder for those of us who would like a rise to win the batting title, but understand that there's some other good hitters that are vying for it as well. So we should expect a rise to contend for a batting title for several years. Right? I mean, he's a 300 hitter yeah, everywhere no he's been. And so it may be a low 300 batting average will win the batting title this year, but if he doesn't win it this year, he should be able to contend next year. That's hit to center. Hit fairly well, but to Trout, and that'll wrap things up. A one for five game for a rise, and the Angels beat the Twins four to two. Just not very much offense. Part of it is because Otani pitched pretty well. Part of it, the Twins just not swinging it very well. But two runs are not going to get it done for you. you. Have to figure out a way the rest of the weekend and the rest of this homestand to give the crowd, the Twins fans, a little excitement. Not much tonight. The novelty of seeing Otani pitch and Louis Varlet pitch and Matt Walner in their Twins debut, but the Angels win it 4-2. Twins live postgame will come your way next.